так That rhymes. Federal Communications Commission has determined the following content to be emotionally harmful. Snowflakes should not view this content under any circumstances, even if supervised by a G.I. Joe, Navy SEALs, Army vet, or someone with good common sense. The views and opinions expressed, including the depictions of persons of color, corrupt politicians, white people, white people with or without a tan, haters, who have yet to brush their teeth typing angrily in the comment section with hot breath syndrome do not reflect any official policy or position of the u.s government this program contains graphic language dark comedy unique intelligence creativity a high credit score and high blood pressure when, when triggered, triggered. This program has also been accused of racism, violence, misogyny, 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 misog
the basement of celebrities and, of course, being a bully. Welcome <laughs> to Talk Talks. Hey, this is your man, Prince Solomon P. Solo in the building. Y'all know what time it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, it's morning. Good morning. Good morning. 6 a.m. 6 6 Good morning. Good morning. Six call. Hey, hi. White boys. Niggas. White boys. Pimp, pimp. Niggas. White boys. Niggas. White boys. Yeah. 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 I saw the check, nigga. Another disclaimer. We don't know nobody personally in these camps. I do not. I want y'all to stop trying to say people are biased. When we talk about the psychology of Kendrick and where he's amazing at and where his flaws is, people say we dick riding him. When we said Drake was the most battle tested MC of the 2010s, the niggas say we on Drake's dick. When we talk about how amazing future music is, when it comes to his warlike witch energy, the people say we on future's dick. Okay, we're on nobody's dick okay. in this fucking industry. We are hip hop. Historians and fans yes. know LeBron James, okay? <laughs> There's too many dicks being mentioned. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of dicks that we talked about I in hip hop culture. I they know. always be talking about dicks you all the time. To make my stomach hurt. <laughs> I didn't have breakfast. I had some yogurt. All right. <laughs> Pause. No diddy. All right. Now I'm back. <laughs> Uh, I'm back with, now I'm back with the homie sin. Uh, you know, I had to go solo yesterday because we, well, no, was it yesterday, the day before yesterday because we put up three streams because there was so many things going on. And of course, we still haven't had a chance to cover Iran, Israel, and all these other things as well. But we do that on our Patreon. Like we said, we don't do that on Walt Disney YouTube. We they are, can have that. We also demonetize. So we will be talking about Iran and Israel, all that stuff on our Patreon. We also have an exclusive Patreon stream where we will be talking about leaks also, the track that the verse that uh, Drake had on French Montana, a uh, track that was eventually deleted, mm. where mm. Drake was talking about him and Lucian Granger, like Kobe mm. uh, Bryant and Shaquille, and, and, and Shaquille O'Neal. And also, shout out to Harriet Eve on X. She's doing a dance <laughs> all the time with her post. You know, she shout gave us a, she gave us a shout out on uh, yes. X, formerly known as Twitter, where she said, "Dark Crimes is the place to be for independent hip hop talk." Cause we are truly independent we don't have none of the industry dudes in our ears trying to tilt us against one or the other we like all of these guys music yeah. and we enjoy all of their camps being in here and we and again it's about the humor too so sometimes we're gonna roast and have some fun we got to get into it too to let everybody know by the way because if they were in our ears their breath will be smelling like diddy scrotum now now i just have to all say right? this because i wasn't on the rick ross stream because you know prince did his thing because i had to do some other stuff but i will say this rick ross killed it with humor and that's the most we can discuss that because they they wanted to hear our, our commentary together on that one you know i i was just doing the roasting and talking about some other stuff as well I, go. I was gonna say that's the most energized Rick Ross sounded in years. It's because we I called mean, him old. Uh, yeah, we and, called him old. And don't get me wrong, yeah, yeah, I know Rick Ross was listening in one of our other live stream where we told him to stay his old ass out of it. Yeah. Respectfully, said, that's not to anybody that's forty eight years old. Right. We're just talking about in hip hop and rap music when guys, you know, they get a little bit too old in the club. We said leave it to the millennial. That's all we say. The millennial yeah. pairs to beef it out. We want to see Kendrick get and, busy. and Drake and Future them, but. Despite me being ageist in that conversation, I will saying, say you were you was out of line. Ricky Officer Ross brought a lot of humor. Get that nigga the BBL right Drizzy. It's trending. The half nigga cut up nose. Absolutely. You know, had Drake trying to make jokes about running to mommy about his, but this is Drake joke about you know Rick Ross being a racist. He did something. Stuff. He turned into a Karen. Well, he was trying to be funny, but I said don't use those jokes because those gonna be worked against you. Well, I told you guys before. <laughs> Like I said before, Drake doesn't have a good sense of humor. That doesn't make it, doesn't have him a, he's a snappy, sassy rapper. Is that your girl's tour or your world's tour? Which was a hot. Or was it reversed? Is that, that's Am your, I forgetting the lines? Like it, Lupe it, did it a Tribe Called Quest? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember that when Lupe said, I don't listen to it? Is that your world tour or is that your girl's yeah, tour? Yeah, thank you so much, Sam. Thank right. you so much about that. But no, Ross got busy, Rose got busy. And also, listen, as we talked about this before, 
I know what Drake wants to do, but I, I keep saying this and people have gotten offended and I love our immigrant community, but you got to understand there's a special type of ignorance that is branded in America. White ignorance, black ignorance, there's a special type of ignorance here in America that will be proliferated in rap music. So if Drake wants to understand something, he has to understand this. You can get up there and call him 50. That, that that That's absolutely funny. Hey, man, he pushing 50. I thought that was a hot bar. Yeah, I well, he got a, allegedly he got Lilith and Gemini, and I do yeah. think when Drake goes into dark humor, yeah. that's where he shines. And also, when he was actually... Was that a pun, sin? <laughs> you said dark. Humor. What but, you said dark? You but, said that with the light-skinned man? Yes. Okay. But also, <laughs> when we're talking about uh, when when Drake also... <laughs> Gigi Ross is pure garbage. When he okay, we got OVO heads in the chat. We got OVO heads in the chat. <laughs> when, when Drake goes into his suburb, uh, suburban roots and don't feel any shame about it, that's also where he shines. But uh, getting back to it, y'all could think, you know, uh, Drake is... I mean, uh, uh, Rick Ross is trash. Uh, we could talk about the Diddy stuff uh, as well. We've been talking about Diddy on hand and Lucian Grange. But just on some hip-hop shit for a moment, uh, uh, <laughs> Rick Ross brought a lot of humor. He was funny. His fat ass was funny as fuck. Even with the hypocrisy, the, nigga, the fat nigga oh, yeah. still got off with a lot of jokes that, uh, a lot of uh, jokes that hit hard. Listen, Ross is a funny nigga. Most niggas from Florida are funny. Even though he gets on my nerve, Kodak Black is funny to me. He's a funny little toxic demon. Like, listen, do I want to get to know the nigga? Absolutely not. No, stay over there, please. Right? But the other side of the game is this. This is what we have to understand. Drake came out and he said, look, I don't even want to be bothered this, that, and third. Ross went up there. He called him Big Nose. BBL Drizzy had it trending. Now. I know some hip hoppers that are online, they're reviewing the tracks, they're saying, yo, Drake did his thing when it came to the lyricism, the bars, this, that, third. Absolutely. I 100% agree. I still feel that it is charged up part two. That's why we're about to get into this other situation right now. But when Rick Ross came out, I'm going to be honest with you all. Two mistakes or two things that happened that we're not feeling the sting as hard as people, especially in the OB Hill camp, would like it to be. Number one, when he put out the rough draft sketch, when he put out the rough sketch to the disc record and then had it rapping over the take money track and it just, you know, they were like trying to figure some things out and then they reintroduced it, sent it through DJ Academics and then it came out of the internet. Still, the polished version was interesting, but what did Ross say within two hours? He said, niggas leaking records when we speak directly. And that was a fire bar. <laughs> now, up, we were the first ones to report it that uh, the push-up track was a bait track. I don't think that was Drake's best. If it was his best, it would be trending like back to back. It would be trending like Duppy was trending. I think it had a warm response because, again, Drake wasn't sure. He's putting out leak material to see, uh, to, to catch the energy of the crowd. And also, he's putting out bait tracks to try to bait Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar to come yeah. out there and drop his actual disc record. So, That's you know, the one he wants. Right, so the OVO camp is trying to be tr strategic with this, but they do have uh, leaks in their camp. And I do want to say a another thing of what we're going to be talking about, just so y'all can get the description that we put in this video. We will be talking about Who Kid and 50 Cent and Genuine and all them picking Drake. We put that in the description box already. Uh, to let y'all know that's one of the things we're going to be talking about. We're going to be also talking about Mickey Facts, how he tried to use the N95 to really expose uh, Kendrick, but it seemed like it may not be working because it seemed like that may not be true. Uh, we also going to talk... Come on, real estate guru <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> Nigga, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's get let's it. Go. All right, let's get up, go. Get up with me. Get up with me. <laughs> also, we also want to do a disclaimer. Nobody in here is innocent. I know people trying to go with the light-skinned Drake mm. and talk about he's a victim and all these guys ganging up on him. He's not a victim. He's an apex predator. Five years. Let's be real. He's been dissing uh, Kendrick. Kendrick and his story became personal because when Kendrick dropped control, 
Drake didn't like that. Actually, Kendrick kept it hip hop. Let's let we gotta right. we gotta be real. Somebody took it personal, so right. that's why we're ten years in the game, still holding on to this grudge. So Drake is a predator himself, just like these other guys. Let's stop trying to give him the the save by the bell treatment. Stop it. Stop but it. Yeah. On the flip side, stop when, trying to treat Kendrick like Rosa Park. Put right. him to the back of the bus. Y'all are being racist. But <laughs> when it comes to what Drake is saying, by I put a lot of these niggas on, that is true as well. That some of these guys are mad at Drake because he don't want to do features with them anymore, and they're crying like uh, uh, babies about it. So when Drake's speaking on that, there's a lot of truth to go around because Drake is telling the truth. Kodak Black got mad at Drake only because Drake didn't do an album with him. So all these, some of these guys there's are a couple things. some of these guys are kind of acting a bit uh, hoish, okay. like trying like Look. to really want to be like who's going to sit on Drake's dick first. I'm not Stop saying it. all Come of them. On, again. I'm not saying all of them, because Kendrick ain't yeah. one of them. Because right. he's had classic albums without a, a, a Drake verse at all, but and, and, a, and a popular album without Drake, like what damn. Did, uh, but the say? rest of them are, are thirsty for that that Drake uh, a stimulus package. I don't have a beard, and you can't sit on my lap. Santa Claus ain't black. Okay, so here's the other side of it. Now this is the angle that I'm going to shoot from. All right, as someone that was. In the South, growing up in the South at the time, and, and basically, I had a chance to look at Drake's trajectory through regionally a Southerner's perspective, and I'm going to tell you what I saw. He's absolutely right when you bring up his peer class, um, but also, at the same time, when they brought Drake in from Degrassi, Canada, they had to usher him in and get stamped by a lot of popping guys that was already cooking in the Lil South. Wayne. Rick Ross, Lil Wayne. There's a, there's a lot Migos of guys. already had a movement yeah, started. Jeezy. There's, there's a lot of guys that Drake got that Southern stamp from. Right, that right? is true. He got that Southern stamp. That's what he started coming out of Houston. You had Bum B vouching for him. You know, they were even taking Postmas P- Pimp C vocals and putting it together with Drake on mixtapes. So those are a lot of the things that I did get a chance to see at the time. It was not only Lil Wayne, even though I could state before, Cash Money Records had the longest run in hip hop. But outside of that, he still needed an appeal, kind of like what you saw with what Deb did with Nicki Minaj. Again, you know, a lot of Southerners, because the South was really cooking at that time with a lot of record sales and, and public notoriety. And so Rick Ross is, from what I got from the disc, did, he's coming from that perspective, just to be honest with you. And I know a lot of people had a chance to check out the previous stream, you know, where I was doing what I was doing, but, you know, I'm glad I wanted Sin to come back. She had to get some rest. Now we're here and we can just delve with that to a little bit. And then this is tying into this recent uh, quote unquote AI leak. Which right? we think is a real. Yeah, we look, think, we, we think, think that was the Whitney we, yeah. uh, uh, disc record yes. is from our perspective is real, but Drake, uh, just to let y'all know, Drake came out and said that it wasn't him, but we feel it is. Just like we said what we said when he dropped the original record to that point, Sin, you know, uh, you're right about that. What we said psychologically, how he operates lyrically, that's where the placements are. Look, the OVO camp is doing filler tracks right now. I'm being honest with you all. They're putting out beta apps to see how the social media landscape responds to it. He should have claimed this one. <laughs> he claimed that child. OVO camp, you should have claimed. This is yeah, this was the one y'all should have claimed. You should have claimed it when, like, when they said, I turn y'all niggas into K-pops and, you know, trying to take a spin K off dot, of K-Dot yeah. and all that. You should have, y'all should have, uh, Y'all should have claimed that one. Well, you know, another thing that you're talking about that is absolutely true. When he got to the end of it, when he said, push your teeth, push your teeth back, and how he was flipping it, and let's talk about it, like I'm addressing push your teeth right now. Look, I'll be honest with you, it didn't feel like AI to me. It didn't feel like, and I heard somebody in the background while he was rapping or the track was being played, they mentioned Southside. So I don't personally feel that. I don't think that was AI. I absolutely don't. I think what's going on right now, as they did before with the push-up track, because they said the track was originally called Give Me 50 or Push-Up, they're trying to feel around. Remember, they came out with a different instrumental, polished up. And not only that, keep this in mind, guys, right? Keep (laughs) Sound like Game wrote that. Keep this in mind, guys. Look, the track that's being leaked right now, High Whitney, 
it's a play of what he already stated in the previous disc where he's alluding, right? The, the, the illusion is that Kendrick Lamar, this is this is the rumor. I'm not saying this. This is the rumors that she had an affair with a bodyguard while he was out doing his thing, which he talked about in, in Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. And some of the notions, Drake really doesn't have anything on Kendrick per se like he may have done with some of these other boys that he had a more intimate relationship with. But WAC 100, while speaking to academics, he did confirm, he says, uh, you know, even the whole notion of Top Dog and, and Kendrick Lamar being a slave up under him, WAC said, that's not true. He says Drake is not inside the camp. He don't really know nothing about Kendrick Lamar. So to go from that angle, as Drake normally does, is through someone's girlfriend or woman. And when he said, hi, Whitney, it was also a continued concept from the previous diss track. I think it was a really good diss snippet. I think he should have claimed it. Uh, this is just Thought Crime's opinion. We think it's real. Just like we said uh, we, first on our live stream, we were the first ones that said it was real mm -hmm. uh, with the push-up ones, and then eventually it was claimed. I do think Drake needs to be careful, though, with having too many baits and switch because then it's going to look like you're not uh, confident in what you got against Kendrick. And again, this second one to me the it was better than push-ups. Yeah, it was. So I would have yeah. had just dropped the uh, Whitney thing. And I, love, and I actually enjoyed and I, the instrumental. But go yeah, ahead. the instrumental was banging. I think you yeah. would have actually had something very trendable. People could say what they want in the OVO camp, but the push-up ones is not trending as much as people thought it would. And, <laughs> because uh, Ross ate that up. <laughs> and because and, and Rick Ross fat ass strategically, he was smart with it. Two hours. He Two hours, Rick Ross dropped to intercept the legs of push-ups as well. Now, again, I still believe that push-ups, as we stated first on Thar Crimes, push-ups was a bait track to try to get the get Kendrick Lamar out because Kendrick Lamar is the only person who can defeat Drake. Let's keep it honest. <laughs> Because people could be cute all they want. Drake, uh, uh, Kendrick is equally as popular as Drake, but from another angle, right? Both of their tours sell out well. Uh, the last tour that Kendrick did, he was the highest uh, selling tour yeah, in hip hop right period. Mm -hmm. So Kendrick and Drake are equally popular in their own lanes. And also, you won't get like white Hollywood trying to um, carry Drake as they would do with Rick Ross. Let's be honest. People see Rick Ross as a dirty, fat nigga. You know, you got Uma Thurman coming out, you know, uh, saying she's in Drake's corner and all that. Rick Ross is like dirty uh, car oil grease. So white America is going to be scared with that, right? Yeah, he's a, he's a Geechee. He's, he's a, no, he's a Geechee nigga. This, this, is what, uh, this is what I was talking about where Drake, where he was going to drown in this particular territory yeah. because Ross doesn't really care. Like, he was, like, look what he called him. He called him a big nose white boy. Right. You know, so, I mean, I'm just being honest with you all. It's not going to go, <laughs> like, like, no, this is not going to be a, like a fabulous thing where, all right, I'm about to go to the studio and then I lay some bars down and we get off the track. No, what they're going to do is get on there and, and talk shit about you in other ways. Go ahead. But, but Drake can't do the big scary black man with Kendrick because crackers love Kendrick too. Actually, you know, some white people love Kendrick more than Drake because they like to uh, feel like they're really a part uh, of the black experience. Uh, he's so <laughs> short and dark skinned and intelligent. <laughs> Oh, let's talk about the modern Mozart Mark Twain Kendrick Lamar. All right, so with Rick Ross. Yes, yes, he's beautiful, and I have the vinyl. So Rick Ross is the chitlin circuit. He got out of there, and he called Drake a cracker, white boy. I laughed. Uh, a nigga nose got surgery, BBL, Drizzy. I mean, come on now. All funny all things, and it did stop the bait track from going forward that Drake put out there to get Kendrick out. But you cannot underestimate Drake's bar game, though. And if he comes with dark humor, even, again, with that snippet, he should have went with it. I would have had dropped that Whitney uh, uh, track that. It, I feel like that's that nigga. Because it, it, I, it, I think that. it was actually pretty I, good. Yeah, I'm not doing this shit, you know. And, you know, props to the boys. And, you know, I, I know they said that, you know, Drake text academics and said that wasn't him. Stop it. That was you, nigga. That was you. Who else is going to be online to think in that matter? If you think artistically and conceptually where Drake goes a lot of times, and I'm just being honest with you, and if I'm feeling like this, I know for somebody like Kendrick Lamar who's had a chance to study Drake for the 10 years, Drake has been subbing the shit out of him, 7 to 10 years. I'm sure he's very aware of the game tactics that are about to take place. Usually high-end lyricists do this. You know, even how Drake knows to move with certain guys, right? 
the reason why I think there's a stop and go, stop and go, which was similar to Nicki Minaj. And I'm going to say the side note, because, you know, I've made jokes about Nicki Minaj because, you know, I think it's just funny. And I think Nicki Minaj, as a reader repulsa of hip hop, I think she's fucking funny, you know, right? But if Nicki Minaj would have had a far more polished track and just drop that bitch on the internet, she had strong punchlines in there. She had humor. And... When she kept saying the jokes on Twitter and when she kept saying them on her live, it took away the shock value. But if she would have dropped that Bigfoot track with a nice instrumental and just let the internet hear it for the first time, I promise you that would have blown Meg the Stallion first round out of the water. It would have made Meg the Stallion have to go back into the studio and give us something else besides hiss. I agree because if if Drake can't worry and being scared uh scaredy cats, and I'm telling y'all, if y'all would have dropped that high Whitney, yes. that would have forced Kendrick to respond within a couple of days because that's a track that would have been hot. It would have trended well. So he talking it, dirty on there. It would have had yeah. Spotify numbers. Because you know Drake can't, you know, basically, you know, backed out of it mm-hmm. or doing this whole thing we got to see what everybody else think fuck what everybody else think be confident and what you drop because push-ups gives kendrick two weeks mm-hmm. that push-ups is not a uh, that bait track is not a, a bait track where i'm not getting uh, out my bed for that shit i ain't getting out my bed for that shit fuck that shit you know if i if i'm if i'm kendrick lamar and i still got a strategy that i'm setting up mm-hmm. push-ups does not force me to have to come out before two weeks or have to come out before a month uh, push-ups is a is a is a bait track where ah, I could wait a month before I, I I put my shit out. But the Whitney one, yeah. Well, we heard with that that leak, which we think it is Drake, even though he's saying it wasn't. I disagree. That yeah. one would have yeah. forced Kendrick to put out uh, his track within days. Yeah, that's you, old Canada. That's you, nigga. That, and, and this is uh, this is me talking. This that is you, nigga. I, and, and let me tell you something. I do feel that there are battle rappers in the studio with him. Because that flow was a battle rapper flow, especially when he changed it up at the end of the snip. And again, we're going to be on our Patreon. We're just going to go further into it. We're going to play the clip. Not going to play it on YouTube because look what they did the first time around. When they kept saying it was AI rap at the time, people were coming into our chat say, hey, guys, they're striking the videos down. I said, well, that proves the point. Right? If it was AI rap, you would have just left it up there. Right. Right? So, with so that he could put said, out his version. Right. But it was the, the same policy. fucking song. It was the same song. And that, <laughs> that that high Whitney, that is what he was saying. Even how he ended up, I was trying to keep it PG. And he's referencing PG language. which we know Kendrick Lamar recently started up with Baby King. Right? Smoking on your top five, top five, top five. Right? My situation in this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if these are new individuals around Nikki and Drake, but I feel like this. Stop the hesitation. You know, drop these things on the world, right? Because Kendrick drop, won't yeah. hesitate. He's go- When he yeah. dropped that shit, he ain't going to be saying, oh, it's AI. Yeah. And I- it's just going to drop. It's just dropping. But I'm saying with the high Whitney, I believe that's him because that is exactly where he was alluding into from the previous track. Right. When he says, I got to move around with bodyguards like Whitney. And again, I've been on the Reddit forums. I've seen certain things and people have alluded certain things as far as marital issues at times with um, Kendrick Lamar's high school sweetheart. And that's respectfully. I, I don't know. I'm not over there. Don't care. Right. But I'm just saying Drake brought it to the public like he did with Meek Mill. And of course, what we saw with Nicki Minaj, it is the same battle tactics. Now, when Wack came out and confirmed recently that Top Dog and Kendrick Lamar's relationship is A1, A1 credit, right? 800, 700 score, 700 credit, right? He was saying that's because he said that shows me that Drake is, he don't know anything. He's an outsider and Kendrick pretty much keeps to himself. He tours and then for three summers he stays at home. That's what they, that's what Wax says, right? There's no way, but the, the, the High Whitney track, it sounds like Drake wants to go Drake Avelli, my personal opinion. I feel like Drake wants to go Drake Avelli. I think he wants to get all of this therapeutic, repressed energy, this post-traumatic half-slave syndrome shit out. I think that's what he wants to do, right? Here's the thing, though. You got to get ready for the clapback because you shot up Rick Ross. You say you got old knees, right? <laughs> Ross went right in there with some MSM and vitamin C, and he got busy on that track. <laughs> so that being the case, but... 
going back to this, uh, the flow scheme towards the end, clearly there's some some notable battle rapper is there in the room with Drake. And I'm not saying are they writing his stuff or not. I'm saying people do get assistance with creative direction. Think about that, right? Creative direction. Um, we hear the legendary studio sessions, the stories about Eminem, like when he brought Kendrick Lamar to the studio. And he said he wanted to sit in the studio with just him and Kendrick to see what Kendrick was doing, what was his writing process like. They said Eminem likes to do this with MCs or self-professed lyricists. He likes to be in the studio alone with them and see what they come up with, right? I do believe that Drake has been able to recruit some people that are part of the think tank for not not this think tank. I'm talking about his own OVO yeah. think tank and outside. Cent, of, yeah, who kid? Right. Uh, you know, even what is in the description box of what are the main topics? One of the main toxic topics we was going to talk about is look. Fifty Cent has chosen uh, Drake's side in this. Uh, you also have Woo Kid. You know, although I think Woo Kid could have done a better job with push-ups, even as a bait track, I would have. I would have look for a bait track to really work. It gotta be like a B plus. Let's say you know I want to. You don't want to put your A plus shit out there, but at least put a B plus bait track if you want to get somebody as big as Kendrick to come out of his cave and drop the heat that he got uh, in his safe. You know, you gotta really, you gotta really be wise with that. And I do think that High Whitney would have been that. Uh, type of track if they just would have dropped it we're just confidently dropping now some people are saying let's not act like somebody couldn't take the last part and put it into ai no sir no sir no sir no sir we don't fall for them them industry games here on thought crimes when push-ups came out and people was telling us it was ai we personally said we thought it was drake and then it, it was confirmed then you know we think the whitney one when we heard it that sounds like drake he he hasn't he hasn't confirmed it but he should have dropped that shit out and then Talk about the recruitment process. Yeah, he got Mickey Fax. He has DJ Who. He got uh, Lupe may jump in because Lupe and Kendrick got, you know, he, <laughs> you know, Drake may be able to recruit uh, Lupe. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, I'm sorry. And, I don't know why that was funny. And then, you know, <laughs> he patched it up. In. He patched it up with Sauce Walker. People can say what they want about Sauce Walker, but when Sauce, Sauce Walker, Walker gets busy. did that diss Stop. track of his own version back to back towards Drake, that shit was funny as that's, fuck. That's one it of was the, hard as fuck. That, that was actually one of the, the top five Drake diss tracks I recall listening to at the time and with this particular one I, i'll say this look stop it one thing about ai bros and i'll say this again one thing about ai bros they're too ambitious they're too ambitious i'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you if i was doing ai voiceovers i don't need to but if i was doing ai voice i would have did it in the manner how the quote-unquote leaked high whitney track looks ai bros they're proud of their work how dare me put out some scratchy shit? I want I want them to hear how how much I sound like Drake. So it's always going to be crisp, clean, and clear. If you ever notice with all of the fake AI bros out there, Tupac, Snoop Dogg, Biggie Smalls, Big Pun, all of the AI bros, all right? I'm telling you to step into my nigga psychology. All of the AI bros make sure their stuff sound polished and say, hey, this is a Drake leak. This is a Tupac leak. That one, that's not an AI leak. That's not an AI leak. From our opinion. That's our opinion. That's not an AI leak. It, it, was, it, was too, it was too organic. The atmosphere was too organic. And you hear what Drake was hitting on that he already conceptually hit on with the first diss track. He should have dropped it. That would have been hot, and it would have, and that one would have been more psychological towards Kendrick. Then put, I tell you, push-ups. Kendrick don't care about that. That didn't psychologically hurt Kendrick at all. It wasn't even a flesh wound. But that high Whitney would have been a better strategic move, and it would have, it would have done some damage. And it, uh, it sounded hot from what we was able to hear from it. And you should have went with it. And also, just let everybody know. At 8 a.m. on our Patreon, we're going to be listening to that track and also the track that French Montana had with Drake, where uh, Drake was talking about Lucian Grange was his twin. Just to say this real quick with the Diddy stuff that we've been reporting on and also with Lucian Grange, I don't give none of these guys any points with Diddy because if you if you cool with Lucian Grange, which most of the weekend all these guys have been, um, that means you know, you're still in that network because Lucian Grange allegedly was the one who is connected to the trafficking ring. So you can't throw Diddy under the bus, but then 
um, protect Diddy's master, who basically gave him allegedly the funds to do the dirty things he's been doing in hip hop. Just so nobody gets brownie points off that when you fucking with Lucian Grange at the same time. But going back to the hip hop shit. Yeah, those are two separate conversations. And, right. you know, we go further into that. Uh, we'll touch on those things in, in other streams. And mm -hmm. then we also go further into that on Patreon. Uh, right now, we're covering the musical side of the game. You know, the, the part that, you know, the culture, quote unquote, is responding to. I keep it gangster with y'all. Look, I just, I felt that was, I felt that was Drake. I felt that was Drake. Just like the first yes. time around, Sin and I, when they put it out there and people kept saying it was AI, I said, yeah, that sounds like Drake. That that actually sounds like Drake. And, of course, the polished version was put out into the public. Now, what I will say, I want y'all to be clear, all right? I think Drake did his thing, as you guys have listened to it on Patreon, where we was breaking, you know, we played the disc and we was able to break things down as we moved along. I feel like Drake did his thing on push-ups. The ball is in Kendrick's court right <clears throat> excuse me the ball is in Kendrick's court right now right and I felt he got busy I felt he did what he but here's the thing where I'm coming from concerning the likes of this is where I'm coming from with the likes of uh, push-ups look I feel like um, it was great for the the rebranding of his image in the public of quote-unquote being scared right and smart think, just to put something out there yeah so the public now they reinvigorated that Drake is quote unquote clapping back or snapping back at people. Do no, I feel Cole. yeah? Do I feel that it was enough to get Kendrick to hop out the bed and say, "Yeah, I'm about to drop this shit right now"? No, but I think it was great tactically for the rebranding of Drake being quote unquote seen as a big sissy from Canada right now, because that that had been the notion. We seen him. We didn't see him go back at Pusha T. For other various background industry underworld dirty nigga reasons, right? But we did see Drake go at Rihanna. We seen Drake go at you know Serena Williams' husband. We seen Drake go after Megan the Stallion. So he was looking like a big sissy on the barn to the public. This, what I'm saying with push-ups, how it works for him, it changes people's perspective of him. I don't feel it was enough to make Kendrick Lamar respond immediately in an hour or two hours like Rick Ross. Rick Ross said, well, I want to address this right now. Let's go and get this out the way. But I do feel the High Whitney studio link, that is the one that will get up under Kendrick Lamar's skin psychologically. Whether y'all believe it's AI or not, whether it's really not him or not, that is the type of energy and that is the type of lyricism that would get Kendrick out of the bed. Uh, also, just to add to everything else that we're talking about here, people, it doesn't matter that Kendrick went away five years. Y'all gotta understand how music works. When you look at the albums that the biggest hip-hop artists of all time put out, it's with the exception of Tupac, because Tupac was just crazy. He's always putting shit out all the time. There was always three years, two years in between. Now, when Kendrick went away for five years, that was actually a smart move because he had leaks in the TDE camp. He had to reorganize, and I think to, to be to still be considered on Drake's level and to have gone away from five years is a, is a testimony to how much Kendrick means to the culture. And, you know, leaving off with damn, and also just to say this real quick, Kendrick has to bring damn energy. He got to bring that damn energy. He got to bring that. We just passed the seventh anniversary. Right. He got to bring yeah. that like that energy. He got to go in the studio with with uh, Metro Boomin and make a, a, a disc record EP even if before the heart part six drops. No he, jazz tracks. No jazz tracks. He got to go full trap, full West Coast, uh, L.A. Compton beats with it uh, if he's going to defeat Drake, which let's keep it honest. Kendrick has a good chance of knocking Drake the fuck out, just like Drake has a good chance of knocking Kendrick the fuck out when it comes to this. I do not think anybody else that so far has been mentioned lyrically has enough bandwidth for the public and likability to be able to lyrically get rid of Kendrick or Drake. And this is why these two guys are the main fight. Now, what Rick Ross did... You got to give that fat nigga credit. He did uh, sabotage Drake's <laughs> bait. He sabotaged Drake's bait track. Yeah, I'm gonna give it he up for sabotaged Rick Ross. the shit, shit out of that track. Funny. 
Instead of people now dissecting the bait track, <laughs> instead of people dissecting the bait, the bait track push-ups from Drake, now it Every, was everybody's pushed, having fun with, with it, Ross. Yeah, it was pushed to the side uh, with the Rick Ross shit. That's where, why he should have dropped it first. Where, where Drake had to respond with the with his own joke talking to his mom. The fact that fat ass Rick Ross had what? made had made you distracted when you even had to address it about the fake nigga nose and all that stuff. That fat Florida nigga did sabotage. Shout out to the South. Sabotage Drake's Shout out to track. the South. He sabotaged it. Shout out to the South. They playing uh, Border Patrol right now. Shout out to the South. Rest in peace, Rico Wade. Pimp, pimp. Right? I keep saying that. Rest in peace, Rico Wade. Right, Shawty. So listen, let me let me kick this out here too. By the way, and, and I love it. I, I love it. You know that Ross reminded me of the mixtape days of Rick Ross. You know, he just like yo, let me get that. He's like yo, I got this Jeezy man. We got this Shawty Low man. Who's that? Who's this, who's this big nigga? Oh, that's Ross man. He he out of Florida. All right, yeah, give me that. Give me that too, man. That's what that reminded me of. And this is why we said Drake the first time. When he was over there trying to do all this psychological, you know, rapping over the same sample Tupac and, and the Outlaws had would hit him up. You know, you should have just dropped the polished version. That's what I said about Nigga Minaj. I roasted Nigga Minaj over and over and over. I said, girl, if you don't get out there, if you don't get your ass out there and fight, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be an issue, right? Now, like I said, if Nigga Minaj would have just simply dropped that polished track out there, I really believe for the first round, Meg the Stallion would have lost. I really would have believed that because she came with too many punches, too much humor. It, it just, just not a good instrumental. You know, sending the, the unmixed versions to podcast niggas and they playing it on the, the damn episodes. And it just, look, when Ether dropped, there was no preview. I'll say that again. When Ether dropped, there was no preview. Unlike TakeOver, but Jay-Z was brilliant when he did this. Jay-Z gave three hard verses. Nas was already responding because TakeOver was floating on the mixtape circuit. Nas said, let me take my ass up in here and pick out Paid in Full and channel the God MC Rakim. And he did a freestyle called the Stillmatic Freestyle. Jay said, <laughs> really? All right, the polished version ain't out, nigga. So right. then he went out there and then he added that other verse that he dedicated to Nas, four albums in 10 years, I Can Divide, all this other stuff. So when people went to buy the, the album, they heard the complete version of TakeOver with the additional verse. That was different than what Drake's camp has been doing. Notice Kendrick Lamar's team has not leaked anything. Right. They, and ahead. also, if the if it is AI, because uh, Riley is saying it's, uh, it's, a, it's AI. And also, shout out to uh, uh, OTG that's in the uh, chat, man. We see you on X all the time doing your damn thing. If it's uh, AI, then that's bad for Drake because the AI uh, Whitney shit is better than push-ups by far. Why is it? Why is the AI shit only and, happening with Drake though? And two, no one can say confidently it's obviously fake because that's what Elliot Wilson said about push-ups. When Dark Crimes was the first one here to say, "Nah, we think sense. it was that's real," like, on our stream, we said, "Nah, we heard push-ups. That, that shit is real." It said that's fucking. You Drake. had an industry insider, Elliot Wilson, at first set. Drop and give me 50 was AI. So because of that, there's a mistrust now. I don't trust you anyway. We can't say, I oh, it's not. You. Uh, it's definitely not AI when yeah. y'all play that card already. Yes. So we can't do it twice. Yeah, I'm just saying this. Listen, we don't trust you. No Metro. Elliot Wilson said it's AI. I said, stop playing Border Patrol, nigga. Let that nigga come outside. I knew when I heard it. I've heard enough. Listen, we all have been listening to Drake for over a decade. Doug, I heard that nigga rapping. I said, that's that motherfucker. That's that nigga. Just like this Whitney shit. I said, that's that nigga. I'm not listening to no public relation niggas that need <laughs> niggas on podcasts. I'm not listening to <laughs> industry niggas because industry niggas are told what to do. Industry niggas first was trying to save face for uh, Drake and say push-ups was AI, like Elliot Wilson and others. And then, you know, later when Drake gave them the uh, the go-ahead to say <laughs> it's real, <laughs> then they changed and said it's real. I'm not doing that shit. Dark Crimes here first said that shit was real because we know how Drake's voice sound. And when it comes to engineering, 
Prince knows when something is fake or not or AI or not because them AI sh bots should be clear as fuck. Yeah. Now, going back to this, this is fine if y'all think it's fake. But then that makes it worse if it's AI because that means the AI Whitney shit was harder than push-ups. <laughs> and Drake has to come with that high Whitney energy if he's going to be able to defeat Kendrick or compete with Kendrick because uh, you got a lot of industry insiders you know, a lot of different people, even on the independent scene, saying that Kendrick is about to come with some heat. So, you know, Thought Crimes has never been uh, biased against Drake and stuff. We report on these niggas truthfully all the time. Back in 2018, when industry niggas was trying to be cute and people in the chat didn't believe us when we said the industry was trying to get rid of Drake and people was trying to laugh and all that other shit. And when we said Drake had a diss record for Pusher T. In 2018, all of our commentary was 100% on point on Drake's last dance, on all the Drake shit. And in 2024, we're coming with the honest and real again because this is the third attempt now to get Drake out of the paint in the industry. And because Kendrick is the only one in the peer class that is as lyrical as Drake, he is the only one that they can see having the possibility to get Drake out of here. Pusha did a great job in his assassination of Drake's character to give him a, a huge, a lot of injuries, but he's an old nigga from a different class, the Gen X class, so a lot of people gave uh, Drake uh, uh, grace to, to get out of that one alive, but with Kendrick, if Kendrick defeats Drake because some of y'all in the OVO camp is sensitive and not listening to real criticism, so. that is going to be on y'all when y'all, if y'all boy lose because y'all trying to do Say things that y'all want that you think he would want to hear instead of saying things that will help him win. I'm gonna tell you this too. Even if y'all say, like, I'm gonna give you an example, right? You know, shouts out to um, the individuals in the chat. I'll say this. I'm not. I'm no. I'm not a master of the industry. That's Diddy. That's Lucian Grange. I'm not masters of the industry. Absolutely no. not. Absolutely no, no, no. Diddy. You can't put that on me, niggas. Nigga, I ain't no master. Of none of that industry. That's all Diddy. <laughs> but listen. Even when people say, hey, man, you know, that's been out there for him. Listen, folks, the, the teams are active right now. You got to understand how much power Drake has in the industry. Drake has a think tank, folks. He has a think tank. The OVO staff, they are everywhere. They got bots. They, it, it's no different than what you see on X. All of these record labels. Listen to what Drake said on uh, that, that unreleased joint for French Montana. He said, uh, me and, and Lucian is Kobe and Shaquille. Now, what other rap nigga in the industry has ever felt they were Kobe and Shaquille with Lucian Grain. Not even Jay-Z. Who, who, Jay who in the industry has ever felt emboldened enough to say that, folks? Like, And again, with this whole AI thing, they are trying to get a Gallup poll from hip-hop. They want to see what the public responds to, what works, to be real with you, all right? When they're putting this stuff on the internet, again, they say, oh, push-ups, that's AI. It was, like she said, she said people in the industry say it's AI, it's AI. Then we find out it's the real thing. I want to go to the Lucian Grange part when you said, right. who, what nigga is that close to Lucian Grange when he could say he Kobe and, and <laughs> Shaq? <laughs> uh, when when you look at uh, uh, Jay-Z, even yeah. though, but Jay-Z is a liar. I will say this real quick just Come to on, preference Sam. this. We Stop. know that Jay-Z lie. You know, when he said, you know, you know, we don't need the Super Bowl, y'all need us, and then he over there with the Super Bowl. So I will preface this again. Jay-Z does lie. I'm a hustler. But on the 444 album um, with the Lauryn Hill track, he said Lucian is cool, but he ain't a part of the culture. He ain't us. That's what Jay-Z said. He yeah. Jay-Z was dissing Lucian Grange. Lucian Grange on 444. Again, I preface this to say that. Jay Z is a scammer. Love his music. He's, he's a one, hustler from he, Brooklyn. He, he's one of the greatest rappers of all time. One of the. Right. But you know, I I, get, I I say this with a grain of salt because again, <laughs> because Jay Z does lie. You gotta say it with a gram of coke. Right. A, a gram a, of, I say this with, with a gram, gram of coke, coke. <laughs> because Jay Z does again lie. So, a, but Jay Z hustle. he disses people. Then he goes and work with them. He you know <laughs> he says he dissed the NFL. Did work. So Jay Z could be really cool with Lucian Grange. I don't know, but. In that track, he dissed Lucien Grange. Yeah, but listen to, again, you know, on the unreleased French Montana track, which is what, uh, you know, Rick Ross and, and some of the other things, you know, quote-unquote, I'll fuck a rapper's girl even if I'm not attracted. 
look, Drake said me and Lucian is like Kobe and Shaquille. I have never, ever, ever. I'm talking about, I'm talking about Trioville. Never, ever, ever in my life heard no nigga rapper. I've never heard no nigga rapper, whether his lips was ashy or not. I have never heard no nigga rapper have the gumption or gall to say that on a track. Not that I'm saying that Lucian sure. Grange is anybody. I'm just saying no I've Epst- never. No Epstein. Yeah, I've <laughs> never heard no nigga say that shit. <laughs> Me and Lucian is Kobe and Shaquille. Why? What? That, why are we nigging up uh, uh, Lucian? Who does that? Now, it is a deleted verse. <laughs> and we're going to be playing that verse on Patreon, on our Patreon at 8 a.m. Uh, this morning when we go over to oh, yeah. to that sector. But I just want to say this, too, real quick. You want to say your point? Yeah, and before I forget this, I want to say this uh, just to add this part. He not only said me and Lucian is like Kobe and Shaquille, he said going independent never had an appeal. I didn't like that from Drake. <laughs> Listen, we gonna Drake, play that, it on our Patreon. Drake, that makes you sound like a coon, just like Jay Z. <laughs> now, where I will be fair to Drake, as I don't know, because Drake said he be cool with people and really don't be. Just like Jay Z said he don't be liking people, then he really be doing business with them. So I don't know, but I will say this: you know, Drake, if you would have went independent, you would have been the highest selling independent artist of all fucking time. You should have went independent. Do you think, though, in my personal opinion, do you think but, they, they, the Illuminati would have put his head in the beams though? That's what, maybe that's what it is. <laughs> by, by the universe, yeah. Drake would have been protected because if you look at his fixed stars, though, he makes sacrifices for his family. And I think sometimes that skews his vision on where to go. You know, just like he sacrificed a large chunk of his armor to stand by Jay Prince during that push a T thing, which we told him that was the wrong move in 2018. We said, drop that disc record, press the button in 2018. He didn't do it. Now a huge chunk of his armor has been uh, dissolved in acid, and we Which told is why I do we told that. Jay Prince too back in 2018. We said Jay Prince, I get I get you trying to get your old niggas out of prison, but you sacrificing no, that's okay Drake. You're Sit sacrificing down. your goat, your highest selling artist of all time that you ever had. And you're selling, uh, you know, I, I feel like you just should have tried other options. I, we just said in 2018 that wasn't a wise move. Well, Jay Prince said, I don't really listen to rap. <laughs> we don't. I yeah, just told him to sit down. We don't do hogs and frogs and pigs and boars. Oh, yeah. Drake, they hit you. Stand down. And listen, part of the reason why Drake's armor had been wrecked up and wrapped up at the time is now look at him. I, listen, based on what took place in hip hop, and Drake is a hip hop historian, you know, I think Drake's hip hop IQ is supremely intelligent, just like Kendrick Lamar. Okay, I do believe that. You know, I disagreed, you know, when fans, you know, rest in peace to possibly my second favorite rapper of all time, MF Doom. But, you know, when Drake posted on his Instagram, I believe, he said, rest in peace to MF Doom. Uh, this is where the uh, the pretentious hip-hop Reddit nerds was going, taking things too far. They was like, Drake, you don't know anything. You don't know real hip-hop. I said, ah, that's not true, because if you go listen to his mixtapes, you know, he was rapping over all types of shit, including MF Doom instrumentals. So he really believes in the notion of hip-hop. So for him to have to stand down in the classical tradition of hip-hop with a hip-hop legends such as Pusha T, that hurt him for a long time. That's why I believe on the Whitney track that he would go Drake of Ellie. And just because you're from the suburbs don't mean you don't know hip-hop. Like, stop it. Some of the early cats who created hip-hop, not all of them was from the hood, even though, you know, a good portion was. But being from the hood doesn't make you more hip-hop than anybody else. Being black and a part of this culture does. Although I know some people are going to be like, yo, he's biracial. And uh, uh, a part of his DNA is from Canada. And y'all can have that conversation, but and we'll have those type of conversations on Patreon. But on here, we're keeping it mostly on the music. And I will say that Kendrick is the only person who can compete with Drake lyrically. Y'all can say what y'all want. And I'm not talking about old school. Because people keep bringing up Jada Kiss and Joe Button. We know Joe, Joe Button and, and, and Jada Kiss and, and those type of MCs was smoked the whole 2010 uh, pack. And I love the millennials. I think um, the millennial uh, hip-hop run 
would have been the third uh, golden age of hip hop if it wasn't for Lucian Grange and Diddy, yeah. uh, uh, no Epstein. So that's my opinion. But when it comes to bars and just destroying people and battles, Papoose and Joe Button, we we already know those guys can. Yeah. But we talk the bars about bars were so strong. That's why some of them niggas got shot. Right. But we talk about peer class of the 2010s. Who's gonna be the king? We have Kendrick versus Drake, and the reason why people are invested, you have to respect your opponent. You're only as big as your opponent. The fact that Drake's opponents are Future, Metro, Kendrick, and stuff like that, that proves and showcases the greatness of Drake. But also, the fact that Drake has been irritated for a very long time when Kendrick shows the greatness of Kendrick, you cannot... Be great without great opponents. It's one of the reasons we love Batman's story. Batman got the Joker. And he got Scarecrow. He got one of the greatest villain arcs. And that makes us even want to read a, a, a Batman comic book even more. That makes us want to go out and watch Batman films even more. When, the, when your opponents are whack, when your opponents aren't interesting, there's no legend there. Why do you think it was Michael versus Prince? Two badass legendary niggas who are the one of the two of the greatest artists of all fucking time. Prince plays multiple instruments. Prince was able to do all different types of fucking uh uh, uh music genres. He had Mystique. Uh, he had the the Purple Rain King. Then you got the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, the highest selling uh, artist of our time. If your opponents are ass, then that means you're not working with anything. So yeah, Drake so, yeah. and, and Kendrick is a is a great battle that everybody and, wants to see. And, and I'm not getting into that conversation. I, I think <laughs> you know, I'm not arguing with fanboys now, because I, I, come on now, I, I got eyes I can see. Like okay, you know there are. It's like you know there's LeBron James and then Steph Curry. You know you can't say oh Steph Curry ain't dope or LeBron James ain't dope. They're both dope. All right. Now what we want to see is a great competition. You know and just say I'm a cheerleader. Just say I'm a fanboy, I'm a fangirl, and I'll, I'll be cool with that. We can move on, all right? Now, going back to this leak, though, going back to this leak, I do believe that High Whitney track, even within the two to three weeks that like that had been out there, I believe that they are still trying to feel what to do. This tells me, this is a very interesting space for Drake. This particular opponent, is not Meek Mill. This particular opponent is not Comet. You don't have insider stock trading with someone from the West Coast. You heard what WAC 100 said. He said the West Coast is not turning against Kendrick Lamar for nobody. Because you got to remember, West Coast, the whole culture of it, it, it's it's a lifestyle. It's a culture. It's a religion. You can even see when WAC 100 is cool with someone. And in the conversation, he feel like they're being disrespectful. He said, hey, man, watch your mouth. Pow! So I do believe that. I believe Drake is going to have to be very creative in this regard. Again, I do feel that he got busy. Yes, the ball is in Kendrick Lamar's coat. Drake got busy on uh, 50 push-ups. Also, Drake was tactical. Let me tell you why. When he kept saying 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, just shouting him out, got me talking to niggas like I'm 50. 50 posted. We know 50 Interscope, Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, The Game. We know all of that stuff over there. So that's even Drake trying to move things around. I think 50 just enjoyed the shit. But, but, 50, I don't feel, at the end of the day, 50's moving on with other things. There's nobody that Drake could position publicly against Kendrick Lamar. You can't do the Scorpio treatment where you're moving pieces around. You're going to have to fight the Gemini yourself. I do agree. 50's not going against Kendrick. He's going to get Rick Ross, which is still a smart yeah. move from Drake. Get that fat, funny, trolling nigga out of the way because Rick Ross sabotaged. He did what the nigga was supposed to do. <laughs> he sabotaged Drake's uh, a rollout for his bait track push-ups, which was a smart genius move by the fat-ass Floridian. That nigga was smart. And he ate up a part of Drake's run with that. Drake does need 50 in a part of that Interscope camp to get at Rick Ross because that's the only way he could focus on Kendrick only. That's and, the only and, reason and, yeah. why he lit him up. That's what I said, Scorpio Tactics. Well, since Ross is coming after me, let me activate your old enemy, right? But here's the thing about it. Ross has nothing to do. 
He don't. <laughs> he's retired senior citizen. He has nothing to do. And Drake was right about yeah. that. Yeah, he's Rick retired. Ross is a retired oh, yeah, uh, citizen. He don't. He has nothing to his do. His old ass has nothing, nothing to, to do, do with anything <laughs> right now. Right and now. And we're just talking about old in the respective of rap music, right? I'm not talking about like if you in your 60s and you're listening to the show, not talking about you. We're talking about the rappers. I want to be clear because people say, hey, man, what y'all talking about? No, Rick Ross has nothing to do, right? And 50 Cent and Rick Ross are not in a position of their careers where there's death, possibly, that's going to happen. These are older, rich niggas that are taking shots at each other. So Drake, like I said before, he cannot do the Scorpio treatment. He cannot use Nicki Minaj to trigger issues in the said relationship between Meek Mill and Nicki where it distracts Meek Mill. He can't you know, use his star power and brag about, quote unquote, I slept with your wife to DJ drama, right? With Kendrick Lamar. <clears throat> and I love it. I love it. This is going to be the most unrefined level of shea butter, right? And coconut oil. This is unrefined. This is unrefined, <laughs> unrefined cocoa butter. This is what this is. These two niggas are going to have to deal with each other. That's why Drake kind of, if you listen, I'll tell you this. Push-ups, again, was great for you all, the audience, to say, oh, Drake still got it in him. Right, like, like he, right. Drake was just Drake saying, was hi, saying, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be. I'm still me. I'm still going to be right? responding. But here's the thing, though, right? I listened to the track over and over. I felt Drake got busy on there, right? But there were certain things. I was like, ah, uh, Drake, we're kind of doing that crutch shit. You know, move around with the bodyguard like I'm Whitney. You can't do that with Kendrick. You're not going to be able to do that with Kendrick. Well, Nobody's really going to say in this regard to this angle that, you know, oh, Kendrick Lamar has been simping for his high school sweetheart. But Drake right? was, was slick, though. He mentioned he knew 50 was going to go up That's against Rick Ross because he mentioned Interscope in, in that bait track. That's that what bait it, track was more of a foreshadowing on, on where... Drake is really going to go with it. And uh, that's why, it going back to the fat nigga, it was very smart that he just, that's, he was prepared. Yeah. Two, an hour or two later, two Rick hours. Ross dropped him. He didn't want to get that shit off. <laughs> Fuck you, big nose. Now, what he did, now, I do feel that Will 50 Cent and Ross engage, but here's the mistake Drake made. 50 Cent's level of engagement would would not be enough to distract Rick Ross from trolling the shit out of his big nose ass. Not only that, it's one thing to show hip hop, which I have no problem with Drake doing, to show hip hop that, hey guys, hey, do you see me? I still get busy on tracks. That's what that track was for. But I keep telling you all, you can get busy and be funny on a track, like really funny. You're always going to get everybody's attention. Drake put his stuff out there. He has some funny bars in there. How you a big stepper with a size seven? He had to push in 50 line. But Ross is shit talking on BBL that track. Drizzy. Come on. And you know what? What was trending saying? I stop on following you, nigga, because you didn't like your <laughs> nigga daddy nose. Yeah. I heard that you cut your nose up, my nigga. Yeah. If you have a fake body, you got a fake mind. Like, he needs, to, he was just smart about, though, Drake. He needed yeah. 50 Cent. To, to troll online to take care of, uh, like Drake needs a uh, 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 Rick Ross baby mama, and he needs uh, a Fifty Cent because if he doesn't have Fifty and, and Rick Ross baby mother to be online trolling Rick, you're gonna have a major. Y'all can people can underestimate Rick Ross all they want, but Rick Ross is a funny nigga. A funny, yes, look what he did to DJ Envy. Yes, he's possibly a pet of of Puffstein. You know, again, but we said we'll talk about that on yeah, Patreon. Yeah. You know, y'all could watch our old videos on on talking about Puffstein and Lucy and Grange and all that weirdo shit in the industry. But right now, we're mostly focused on music for this stream. But yes, you know, Drake can try to use that, but Drake got to be careful if he says something about Puffstein, and then we find out he's on Lucy and Grange payroll, and if Kendrick, you know, basically destroys and and showcase that relationship, then. That's going to make uh, 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 Drake look like a, a cracker in the industry trying just to get niggas out, and he's a plant. So he got to be careful with that if if people bring up the fact that Lucian Grange and him are BFFs. But going back to this point where Prince and I are talking about, 
you going Drake is going to have to get somebody to focus on Rick Ross for him so he can focus on Kendrick because Rick Ross is a chitlin circuit and he's funny and that BBL Drizzy shit will keep spreading if he don't have somebody roast uh 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 Rick Ross back. He don't have anybody. Like even if you go get the the ex, I mean, yeah, Rick Ross is still going to keep doing what he's doing. Yeah, you got to understand. Yeah, but he took a break though when the ex first came out. Well, they, they said that some other stuff was going on, but we'll leave oh, that alone. Okay. All right, but you know, this is what I'm saying. You know, with Drake and the whole Rick Ross, and the reason why we have to bring us, and a lot of people for the most part are saying this. To be honest with you, what they're saying is this: Look, some people are trying to say, for the most part. What they're trying to say, for the most part, is uh, sorry about that, guys. Hey, Prince, turn your watch off. <laughs> Prince got right. that Kmart watch. Don't let me stop. I'm just kidding. He don't got no watch on. People gonna be like, "Damn, he got that Rick Ross watch." Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's real. <laughs> Kmart watches. Remember they used to sell? Is Kmart still a thing right now? They, no, I think they went out of business. No, I think it's like two of them. It's like 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 blockbusters. Like one. Oh, of them. Oh, it's like one left yeah, yeah, hanging yeah, on. Oh, yeah. Okay. But anyway, look. All you got to do is look at what was trending. Now, listen, I know to the OVO staffers, I, I love you guys, but you, you can't call people that they, yes, they'll say Drake got busy, but listen, Rick Ross responded in two hours. You know, Drake responded in three weeks. Okay? So while people were still dissecting and assessing what was going on with Drake's track, Rick Ross turned around. And responded with a very funny track, had BBL Drizzy trending, had Big Nose trending. Also, keep in mind, the girls, the women, you know, in the T spaces were already talking about nose uh, nose jobs for Drake. And this is what B-more was telling me about the nose. I heard about the, the, the liposuction and the, the BBL stuff. But when she told me about nose job, and this was like actually last week or two weeks or maybe last month, B-more was talking about this on our Patreon. I said, nose job? What are you talking about? She said, yeah, you know, because she she be in all of the girl tea spaces. She said, yeah, they they already was talking about that nose job. I said, what? That nigga got a nose job. I mean, I'm not shocked, but it would be the, it would be kind of like the first time it, it would be a conversation in rap music, right? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, just to add to your point, yeah. Prince, will bring the chat in. Cause go, uh, just, uh, just to add to yeah. your point, when you said Rick Ross has nothing else to do, yeah. uh, Gigi agreed with that. He said, Ross was up binge eating bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we want this <laughs> bacon <laughs> grease uh, off, was still... my, <laughs> off my Gucci shirt. Yeah, but I'm saying with the fellas, though, for a lot of the guys online, I watched their reaction videos. It was the first time they heard about Drake and a nose job. When Ross started talking that shit at the end, niggas, every nigga I saw paused the video. Hey, bro, wait, what? Drake got a nose job. And that and no and, and and what Rick's sabotage was a great move because everybody was online trying to see if his if his nose was real or fake. Like everybody, the girls were doing it, the guys was doing it, popular channels were doing it. Yeah. Let me, they was all trying to say it looks the same to me. Like yeah. a lot of people was like trying to investigate is this nigga nose real? Yeah, and then he said Drake had retractable abs. Like, come on, man. Now, what's also uh, funny about that? How a fat the the, the audacity. Of that fat nigga to be that bold to body shame, even though Ross has titties, that shows you the confidence in his roast game. That nigga got a job of the hut body, and yet he still had confidence to body shame Drake. Well, I'll tell you this, and I'm going to keep it real with you all. You know, like I said, you know, a lot of big men in the South, they get a lot of love. I'm just keeping it real with you. And you think that's the first and last time Rick Ross had ever been called fat ass? He's been called you know? fat his entire career yeah that's why I, I let me tell you something real quick i i love the rick ross and 50 cent battle it was the first time i still personally feel i felt 50 cent lost that one because when we think of victory with 50 cent we think of opponents being decimated that's what we think of he swung at rick ross it was kind of like when mike tyson swung at evander holyfield the first time if you look at their first bout one of my favorite boxing matches in history the first bout you know young mike tyson gets in there he starts doing that weaving and wobbing shit he does right and he swung at that big old georgia country nigga evander holyfield just stood there mike tyson swung again he said oh shit right and then holyfield just start working and out boxing mike tyson when I remember 50 Cent and Ross going at it, 50 Cent gave Rick Ross everything. 
Rick Ross still came through with them fire tracks. Still came through with that good ass music, you know. And I remember actually they were doing voting just like they did with Nas and Jay Z. And a lot of people called in. They said, I kind of think Rick Ross kind of got fifth on this one. You know, he was picking better tracks. And at that time, 50 Cent was making bad music too. Rick Ross was still giving you late night cruising music. So with this particular situation, you know, Ross woke up and gave you beautiful funeral music when he started rapping about Drake. You know, it then, was it was great. Yeah. It was the flow was nice. The flow was the magnanimous. Music. The oh, flow popping was magnanimous. chicken and popcorn in the limousine. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> it was it was funny shit. You talking about whether you got the uh, the heat by me, Chia Ali? It was some fat Cheetos uh, uh, yeah. luxury rap. It mm. was it was hot Cheetos luxury rap. You know what it was? It, it, it was. <laughs> It was grandiose. It was, um, it was this. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. And then, you know, he he had the the piano. Do 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 do. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like five season music, five star hotel music. You know, it was Las Vegas, all oh, the theatrics. Also, I just want to bring in Boy in the comment section. They are paying off uh, YouTubers TCZ. I'm praying y'all bad come. OVO is at work. They are going to win on the on the net. Believe it or not, um, paying and people. And I want to jump into that too because that was okay. something I brought up in the the stream where I did um, two days ago. But I, I want you to go with your points and I do want to address that. Go ahead. Babe. Paying people on the net is not going to work because there's too many honest big names and big and big names in the underworld. Thought crimes in, in the underground. Thought crimes is one of the biggest channels in the under in the underground. We have celebrities, occultic people, everyday people, all types of people listening to us. People in the industry, people out of the industry, everybody listens to us. We're like the biggest thing underground. But you have people like the Needle Drop and Sean. You got too many honest commentators, whether uh, you know they rock it with one guy or not, or rock it with nobody. Um, that's gonna be too honest. So the paying people online shit is not gonna work in Drake's favor. So he needs to cut that shit out. You know, you already got academics. You already got Aiden Ross. You know, uh, leave it there. Leave it with the ones you got. If you try to um, push forward, somebody on the net is going to expose you. Also, yes, <laughs> Thought Crimes is also demonetized on YouTube. So, you know, support the movement on our Patreon. Also, our Cash App. I'm gonna put the Patreon uh, link in here right now. Uh, Prince, go ahead. You want to say something to that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, that's Diddy. My bad. No Paulson. Epstein. No Epstein. Um, okay, let's break that down. And I'm glad. Uh, he, you boy know, brought it up. Boy, shout out to you, boy. I think boys from the UK too. So shout yeah. out to the, uh, you, the you people in the UK. Listen to us. Let me, let me well, thank you so much, meditating on matter, and I, that means a lot coming from you. All right, sir. <sighs> Allow me to work. Can I work on go this ahead, one? Go ahead, go ahead, cook. Let me, let me cook. cook on this one. All right. Now, let me cook my J. Cole vegan sandwich, you know, by the way. Shouts out to the vegans, too, by the way, you know. Okay, listen. I want to tackle that, and I addressed it on the previous stream, and I'll address it again. Drake is what he's looking to do, and what he has looked to do was have a war chest strategy. What was the X factor in the room between Pusha T and Drake, ladies and gentlemen, and every gender in between. What do you all think in the chat? I mean, I'm mean, going to ask you all, type it in the chat. What was the X factor between Drake and Pusha T? Who cares about Kanye West? Because you all were focused on lyricism like we. We know Kanye West has to battle reality. Guys and gals, <laughs> tell me what do you all think was the X factor in the room between Drake and Pusha T? I will give you all about 15 seconds. I, I just I just want you all to see. And if you're watching the replay, you get a chance to see in the chat as well. All yeah, right? Give them a couple of seconds. Yeah, give them a couple of y'all seconds. One, right? two, three, <laughs> four, <laughs> five. Yeah. All right, another time has passed. All Go right. Ahead. The X factor in the room, ladies and gentlemen, were you? Oh, look at Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Woo! You get to see all Terrence is a smart. Terrence Howard. <laughs> There you go. Ladies and gentlemen. And more tune for your head top, so okay, watch how you speak on my name, you know? All right, ladies and gentlemen, and every gender in between for you all, you all were the X Factor. 
you all were the uncompromising X factor. Can't pay off the audience. You can't pay off the audience. What happened? Drake got dominated by the internet. The internet was the X factor. Media was the X factor. The unsuspecting villain in the room. Watching from as the eye in the sky like the legendary wrestler Sting over WrestleMania when he was in his crow face. Drake this time around says, well, let me tap someone like academics. Let me tap Aiden Ross. Let me tap, uh, what's the other Cambodian boy that be on the internet and he's screaming with them shades on. He got that uh, Three Stooges haircut. I don't know who he is, but you know, these people got exclusively the polished version of the said AI track that you all were calling out. Is this a diss track by Drake? He said, no, I'm going to go to my media think tank to try to influence the narrative. And it didn't work. Thought Crimes was, the was, again, the first ones on here to say, yo, it was real. We didn't need to wait for no industry confirmation. We said, we have ears and we know that's Drake. You know, um, and you're gonna have a lot of people like us who aren't paid off. We're gonna, we gonna, we would like to see the artists that we really into, Kendrick Lamar and Drake, really go at this, really just listen to it, and no one's gonna be able to persuade us with threats or money. It's so, just great music. Absolutely. So that is what Drake is doing right now. Now, do I think it's necessarily a, you know, like I, I don't think it's a bad ambition. I think it's a terrible strategy, and I'll tell you why. Academics has his own in-house fan base. That's that's his own in-house fan base. You know, it, it's really like the Star Wars fanboy club for Drake. And I think that should be, you know. So when they say the track is hot, when they say that, you know, that's what they're going to say. The Internet is bigger than the OVO stands. The internet is bigger than even the chat, you know, the academic chat gang. They're bigger than the Kai Senate chat game, which Kai Senate is about to get cooked for the black American talk, but that's another conversation we'll have. But you have to understand people's niche fan bases, no matter if it's 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, the internet is global. It's bigger. Hip hop is being viewed everywhere. And you can't persuade people's ears. Like, like, let's say, I'll give you an example. Let's say if, if Thought Crimes was biased and we were like uh, only in Camp Kendrick or only in Camp uh, Drake. If Drake or, Ken or Kendrick dropped an ass uh, a song and we were hyping it up, our own fan base Call us stupid say, niggas, two stupid dogs. <laughs> they're like, we love you, Thought Crimes, but that shit was ass. They do it all the time. <laughs> Y'all have your own opinion all the time. So commentators cannot make you win a a uh, a battle if it's not look when when 50 cent you try to use interscope against uh jada kiss it didn't work everybody knew that jada kiss cooked 50 cent on the song checkmate one yeah. of my favorite diss tracks of all time and look at jada kiss where he went up the uh, you know against the uh, cameron and then like everybody like again when 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 the uh mean girls clicked up together to try to get rid of drake and pusha t came out with the story of adidon Academics was in Drake camp back then, uh, loving on Drake, and it still didn't protect him. Again, warrior penship, great music is the only thing that's going to protect anybody in this fucking battle. It's not going to be payola. Well, also, uh, such out to Stacia. I love what you said, and y'all check her chat out, too, her comment. I'm going to give her a round of applause, too, man. Listen, I love what you said. <laughs> I'm going to give you a Uma Thurman uh, Drake sound effect as well. <laughs> listen, listen. Look what she says so beautifully. She says, how do you soft launch a diss? That's the era we're in. And I'm telling you all, OVO team, you better stop soft launching these diss records. Because you're making the same mistake nigga Minaj made. I Listen, as much as I've joked and roast, and I love the barbs because they've actually taken my roasting of her, you know, they thought it was funny, right? They like nigga, yeah. the nigga Minaj part. I think yeah. deep down inside, Nikki may like that too. Right, well. Being yeah. called nigga Minaj. We're starting to go <laughs> into it's, different territory. It's funny. And ahead. she's a legend, so she's yeah. going to be fine nonetheless. But it, listen, I just don't feel she should have, to Stacia's uh, point, because I don't, you know, I don't want you to accuse me of, you know, taking ghostwriting material. Listen. I do believe, like, if Nicki didn't soft launch that initial Bigfoot track and just release that bitch out there, 
Meg Thee Stallion would be completely a non-issue. Because not only does she have her in-house barbs, but to actually have, quote-unquote, a diss track to knock a young nigga out the game, the internet will also say, yo, you did that one. That's what it was. And let me tell you how they are. comedians. Stop doing that testing the material shit. (laughs) Come on now. Yeah, absolutely. And the the other side is this. Listen, even people that are Kendrick Lamar fans, like hardcore Kendrick Lamar fans, even when they listen to the final launch of the track, they listen to it, and they said, you know what they said, Sin? They said, hey, man, not a bad job. That's how unbiased overall the internet is in favor of failure and, and success, the loser and the victor. But all of this stuff that, you know, it's even when they had Aiden Ross. Let me tell you something. I, I watched with Aiden Ross when he first heard like that. And this is when the track just dropped. He did a live reaction. He said, yeah, it's not that good. I said, oh, Aiden, it's your three stooge haircut as well. What's with these three stooge stream niggas? Right. They got these, all of the ones that are not black, they and, got the same three stooge haircut. And like it's that a, is still number one. Yeah. Because when, the people voted and yeah. like that is a hot fucking track with a good, yeah. you know, promo disc record. You, you're right about that. Verse. No, no you're right. No, no, no. I just thought about what you said. No, you're right about that. When Ada Ross said, oh, that, it's not that good. He had his arms crossed like a dis, like an angry mother. He said, it's not that good. I said, oh, you don't understand hip hop. That's not how it goes. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Because you don't like it. And again, he's on the phone with Drake. Okay? He's on the phone. It's kind of like when Elliot Wilson used to always shit on Nas in Double XL. He loves Jay-Z. As an as a, as a MC, Elliot Wilson feels Jay-Z. He had felt Jay-Z was the God MC. How academics acts with Drake and Aiden Ross acts with Drake, back in the, the magazine era, Elliot Wilson was acting like with Jay-Z. That's how he was acting with Jay-Z. But that's not how the internet works. Now, you can do that in a magazine, and to the un you know to the unbiased you know consumer they were like damn I guess Jay Z is that that nigga I actually like that Nas did this that and third but if it's in you know traditional media like the magazine and newspaper it just it looks true but on the internet Aiden Ross can sit up there with a dirty white T shirt and say you know the track that it's not even that good it's corny but the internet is like damn this shit knocking yeah and, and uh... <laughs> That Kendrick leak doesn't even sound like a diss record, but we'll go into that, and we'll do another stream uh, on the Kendrick one if y'all want us to, but that just sounds like an old track. But let me... Oh, what uh, era do you feel it sounds like? Because there's eras of Kendrick. It sounds like uh, uh, Big Steppers or somewhere between that and Damn, I don't know. Okay, I, I can but, see that. I can but see that. I, I just wanted to say this, you know, um, y'all can't manipulate the culture's ears like that. This is a, And I do agree with Boy on this. Drake is in danger the fact that Like That is still at number one. Think about this. Push-ups is not doing anything. It's not moving the needle. It's not even moving past BBL Drizzy. It's not moving past Rick Ross' stomach. So, uh, uh, again, it was a bait track. It was a good strategy to try to get Kendrick out. But you need to come with that AI High Whitney shit if you want to lure uh, uh, Kendrick out now again it's good that you responded so people can't say you a bitch but right. you yeah. know um, that's, that's what we agree at is that it was to, good to wave to, to the public to say hey guys I still got bite in me to, but go ahead. to say that Kendrick isn't dangerous uh, is why yeah. your OVO king will lose now if you say Kendrick is dangerous <laughs> then you have a, a possibility of winning just like I don't do you think Kendrick is looking at Drake like he's he's uh, someone not to take serious no he took Drake serious back on the control verse when ten he, years ago. Ten years ago, when he just wanted to do, you know, a, a good competitive back and forth with his peers. Fast forward to twenty twenty four, Kendrick still knows that Drake is a threat. So, uh, and Drake and uh, Kendrick fan base for the most part feel that way too. So this is why Kendrick is coming prepared. He's coming ready. He took five years off, got rid of the leaks, got rid of Reason and all them other people in his camp. So, you know, uh, I do think people got to be wise with this. Again, that like that track is still on top in, in, uh, in the billboard. And this is giving Kendrick a direction that him and, 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 and Metro Boomin ha- have to at least have at the very least an EP disc. Oh, I want to say something to With that. them two, those two energies together. I, I love that. I love that point that you're bringing up. And, 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 and again, this is why I love boxing. Boxing, you know, as far as, um, you know, a spectator sport is my favorite sport. 
you know, boxing is my favorite sport. And the reason why is that, you know, we, we can't do the things that we do in media, in, in music, and, in, in, you know, as far as Hollywood goes. We can't, like, magician make-believe shit, right? When people first saw Canelo get busy, like, you can't lie and say that he's a problem or not a problem. That, that's what I love about boxing. You know, you, you couldn't say that, um, you know, early on at the very least that Deontay Wilder, although his technical skills was just all over the place, you couldn't say that that Alabama hammer was not a problem. See, in, in rap music, this you know, it, it needs to happen because there's, there's more of a, a, it's a popular sport. There's a lot of populism that goes on in rap, right? You know, so you're going to stand behind Kendrick, you're going to stand behind Nas, you're going to stand behind the ghost of Tupac, right? It needs that, it needs that fandom, that fanaticism to keep the, the sport. But one thing I love about boxing, when you saw, um, you know, uh, Sugar Ray uh, Leonard step in the ring, when you saw Ken Norton step in the ring, you know, Muhammad Ali, you couldn't, you could not watch them and lie to the public that them people weren't talented or Clarissa Shields, right? Or Alicia Bumgarner. You can't lie and see how they do brilliant technical skills and combinations and jabs and, you know, it just this this transformative techniques. And you couldn't say, oh, it, they they ain't working with nothing. That's not how it goes. That's like being that's like seeing a real fight. You know, that's like you, you seeing your mans get busy and, and knock somebody out and he, you know, that, that nigga like 8 and 0 now. He like, and you can't say he can't fight. You know, the problem sometimes in rap, you can clearly hear somebody do something tremendous, but because of populism and fandom, fandom that goes on in rap music, people lie to themselves and say, nah, they ain't all that, right? And that's where we get into this weird space. So that's why I, I do feel I think people, and I, I, people are supposed to talk that big talk, but we can't distort reality. The reality of the situation is this. Kendrick Lamar, 10 years ago, kept it hip-hop. I want to say that. Let that be the, the, the main topic sentence of this conversation. 10 years ago, it was Kendrick who kept it hip-hop. And I said this, and I'll say this again. I felt there was a bit of a bias there. If Kendrick Lamar, let's say if Kendrick Lamar was from Queens or Kendrick Lamar was from Brooklyn and he did the same thing, they, they would have been saying, this is hip hop. We love it. You know, I'm going to give it to Kendrick Lamar in this regard. He kept it hip hop. He said, this is hip hop and them niggas should know what time it is, right? Here's the sad part about it. This is where we talked about the other side of the game. You can't keep it hip hop. Because guess who got sensitive, right? Drake got sensitive, but Diddy physically tried to assault Kendrick Lamar. Diddy tried to beat up right? all of them, though. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying? <laughs> That's though? why I'm surprised why these, these niggas don't right. hate so, Diddy the most. Because Diddy tried to put his hand yeah. on Kendrick, Cole, and Drake. Yeah, but everybody got to understand, he kept it hip-hop. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. You know, everybody doing all of this extra stuff. My personal opinion is this. Well, Drake back then didn't see Kendrick as a, a threat. Back then, well, Drake kept the hip hop too. You know, but he was I, more he was more focused on Common, Jay Z, and all that. I which I do think it that. was a mistake though to I, to 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 just focus on saying, if those you, guys and and on, not sir. focus on Kendrick. Listen, this this is my thing, sir. When you heard Kendrick Lamar ten years ago, did you feel he was a threat? Absolutely. Okay, come on now. Absolutely, I thought come both on. those guys oh, were, and I thought on. Drake. We, I think Drake. Mis I thought Drake' mistake was I'm not. A, Taking it serious yeah. back then to be a real yeah. competition. Right, he only focused on okay. more of the old heads uh, yeah. when it came to competition. You know, you know what? Going with Joe Button, going and, and, with Jay Z, all, going yeah, with all them niggas was about Ye. to, uh, and all them niggas was about to retire. But they, but before some all of right. them retired, they did a mutiny. Now, and in Wyoming in 2018. So, so here's the thing. I'm gonna finish this off here. I want to say this, folks. Kendrick Lamar kept it hip hop. Everybody got sensitive. Because he kept it hip hop. I don't know if that was good or bad because of how people, you know, wanted to pour drinks in people's heads. And he said, I'm the offspring of Machiavelli. But niggas get to say, I'm the child of Biggie. So he kept it hip hop. I think at the time, Drake made a mistake with that. I think 
you know, just like he responded to everybody else, I think he should have addressed the Compton native at the time. Well, Drake because had a, another issue, because, though. He got a lot Kendrick of leaks Lamar. in his camps. Go ahead. Because, wait, you said what? He has a lot of leaks in his camp. He had it back then in 2018. He We had well, industry niggas telling us about his response to the story of Adidon. This is why we the, was the first ones to report on it in 2018. Drake still has the same leaky uh, can't, uh, leaky people somehow right. around uh, dropping dis. I mean, dropping his tracks out publicly. But go ahead, Prince. Well, that's what happens when you say uh, being independent don't appeal to you. You know, you said he, look. Drake says it on the, the the leaked record where he said him and Lucian Grange is Kobe and Shaquille. That keeps the enemies in your camp when you when you're not independent. Shit. To your point, them so, enemies stay there in your camp. I'm leaking that shit too. Yeah, because they trying Nigga. to get they trying to they trying to eat <laughs> off you whether you live or you get destroyed. And I don't mean violence wise. Whether your career dies or not, when you don't go independent and you be around that industry, you're gonna always have snakes trying to sabotage you. This is exactly why you know Kendrick went like you said and left the whole mm -hmm. that industry camp to make his own thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and keep it real with you, but like I do want to make that clear. Like you can still have your picks. You can still be pro OVO. I don't care. You can still be pro PG Lane Kendrick Lamar. I look, I'm indifferent to it either way, right? I think these all of these men have been brilliant throughout their careers as artists. They've given people some of their best material and it's inspired the next generation. I think we can leave it at that. We can all conclusively agree on that. But ten years ago, all Kendrick Lamar did was keep it hip hop. Okay? That was it. Ten years ago, kept it hip hop. And I saw in interviews that Kendrick Lamar, like three years later, uh, after the controversy, I seen in some interviews he was a little annoyed that you know people still being sensitive about the control verse, but no one did nothing directly about it. And one thing, when uh, Big Crit did Mount Olympus, which was a, a hard knocking ass track, I love that track. Now they want to see a country nigga rap. rap five albums in. I swear, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> thought they yeah. wanted. It. It, thought they wanted bass. Thought they wanted trap. Fuck them niggas, right? But. Look, Mount Olympus, he said, look, I ain't even really get dissed on that track. You know, he told him, all, you know, it was, you know, the track was ran through and he kept it moving for his own brand. He's he said, I acknowledge the track. Now I'm about to give y'all a real banger, you know, and I felt that was it moving on forward. I would have to say, though, Drake's biggest issue is he doesn't know how to get people who don't like him out of his camp. That is true. That's 100 so, percent true. We've, 20, we've said that before. In 2016, you had a fucking leak. The Quentin Miller reference tracks, Meek Mill never liked you. And Meek Mill hates a lot of guys. He gets jealous very quickly. He's a very sassy Philly guy, uh, which is unusual. I like Philly cats. Shout out to y'all. But he, you see how he's crying about with, with Wale because uh, he took a, a picture with his boyfriend, uh, Ruben. But anyway, you had a leak then. Then you had a leak in 2018 when you was going up against Pusha T. We told you Wyoming was a trap. You still went down there. Um, and then you have leaks now, so you you should have went independent. Cause like Prince said, look, if you would have went independent, you could have cut out air. You could have cut out the middleman. And one of the things that they're gonna attack um, Drake on is like you saying you cut out the middleman, but you signed to the to people man. that turn you into the middleman. So he has to really be <laughs> careful. I do think Kendrick spirituality and trusting his intuition, leaving the TDE camp, doing his own thing. The five years he took off to try to get rid of the turncoats was a very, very smart move on Kendrick's ha uh, behalf. Well, again, look at this, though. Look at this. Okay, shouts out to Terrence. He says Lil Yachty has been writing for Drake. I, yeah, I haven't heard those tracks yet, but they said Metro Boomin allegedly leaked those tracks. And, again, listen, I'm going to tell you all something real quick. Y'all got to stop trying to sun producers. I'm going to say that again. Stop trying to sun producers and engineers. Okay, y'all remember that little Asian key master nigga from uh, The Matrix? That's what the producers are. Because if you do something like, let's say you're a big star nigga and you like, you're going to just like stun on me in front of your old bitch ass squad, your yes man crew. I'm a dirty nigga when it comes to that type of shit. You damn right, I'm leaking that motherfucking shit. I'm a leak where they see your ass singing off key. I'm a leak where they brought the little, uh, the black girl in from Harlem to sing your track and you got to do, I'm going to do things to fuck your image up. That's what I'm going to do. And Drake, do, like Sin said, he do got a lot of people that just don't like the nigga. I'm just being honest be with you. I'll be close and dirty, and Drake right. never gets rid of it. You've yeah. been having leaks in your career for the past 10 years With now. that tire going flat. <laughs> right. Now, here's the other side of the game. The fact that Yachty 
is writing for Drake. And I actually believe, I, I do believe Yachty is a better writer than he is as a speaker. My personal opinion. I don't, I don't know about that. I don't All think right. my per- and I'm not, No, no, hold I don't on. Hold on. Think- I want to be clear. No, hold on. Now. Hold on. We're okay. not talking about Pulitzer Prize winner. We're not talking about Stephen King. We're not talking about that. I'm not talking about you no Stephen. You think Yachty's Dor- writing bars for Drake? No. We're talking about hits. We're talking Courses about- Courses and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and, All right. All right. Yeah, we're not talking about bars. It's tongue too fat for that. Now- <laughs> Yeah, engineers are the backbone. Shouts out to Raw and shouts out to our wonderful engineers out in there, uh, you know, that are listening to us. I, I listen, tell and them. And more tune for your head top, so watch you how you speak on my name. Treat them yeah. motherfuckers. I'm going to say this again. Treat them with Tre- respect or they're going to make your shit. Treat them niggas like they are kings and queens. Because some of you raggedy rap niggas and even the rich, wealthy ones, look at, look at the damage that Lil Rod is doing to Diddy right now. Right. Right now. Puff Steen <laughs> disrespected Little Rod. And Little Rod is putting that, that trident spear into the heart of Diddy. And more tune for your head top. So Stop watch how you speak on my name, you know? disrespecting producers and engineers because they will fuck your shit up. Stop it. I don't know where this shit coming from. I don't know where they... I don't know who... To, is it the white man that taught y'all that shit? Y'all yeah, niggas pouring piss in engineers' hands and shit. And he like, yo, man, how my all my albums get leaked? Man, that's gonna fuck up my money. Nigga, and you're stupid. So look, when he said leaks in Drake Camp right now. And even as when we he, speak. Even when he said what he said to Metro, which uh, you know, I thought it was a funny bar. That was funny, though. Yeah, right? He said, make shut some, your ass up and make some beats. But can I be honest with you all? Can I be honest with y'all? Producers and engineers talk to each other. They're no different than the women in the industry. When people used to be like, man, the women ain't got no man. Fuck that bitch. She ain't got no power. And she talked to the other girl. She said, oh, my God, girl, you mean to tell me he made all that, that music about killing niggas and he liked to get pegged that night? Oops. Oh, Oops. Yeah. That's another people. Uh, no Kai Senate. You got to start paying off them bitches, too. Don't have them suck your dick and you ain't paying them their money. Man, little funky hell. Here's your little $2. Them trans uh, prostitutes, you don't pay them. Mm-hmm. Now everybody know you, you, you a trans lover, which mm. that's your personal taste that's your business but you better pay but you better put and then the, stop uh, being cheap you ain't paying for the bussy you ain't paying for the pussy you're going to get put on yeah. you're going to get put on the ground some of y'all niggas <laughs> y'all yeah no for real some of y'all niggas only catching l because y'all cheap <laughs> ain't no cheap labor shit. because if they ain't gonna make if you ain't gonna pay them they're gonna make money off of you they, on the internet shit, i'm gonna make money off of you one way or the motherfucking other nigga <laughs> who the fuck do you think you are nigga uh, also we're gonna die push, nigga die <laughs> we're gonna push our patreon stream to 9 a.m let me yeah. go do that real quick because I, you, we look like we're gonna be overdrive here on our right. on YouTube for a little bit. There you go. All right, shit. Some of y'all niggas out there are tripping. Y'all shitting on engine. And listen, he dissed Metro. I loved it. I love the bar. I, I listen. Drake at his sassiness. I think the niggas funny to me. You know, I think Rick Ross, as far as his roasting and trolling game, has a better sense of humor than Drake. You get what I'm saying? But um, engineers and producers talk to each other. All right. Engineers and producers talk to each other. Okay, I'll say that again. Some of you raggedy rappers, y'all get out there. Y'all start shitting on engineers, not paying them, not doing this, that, third. Them niggas love leaking that shit, leaving with DJ drama and all of that stuff that took place. Like, oh, you just a little DJ nigga. Fuck you. I got your wife. This, that, and third. Here come Funk Master Flex, New York City. My, I do think I got a track for y'all. The only engineer he could, and producer he should be shitting on is is, is Metro Boomin, which it, well, he was funny when he said push push ups. Also, for people saying we hating on the trap, the track, stop it. Leave thought crimes alone. Mm. All right, say your fucking opinions and stop your groupie antics. Don't get mad at us. We're just calling it like it is. You know, push ups wasn't bad, but you undercutting your own nigga because that's a bait track. Like, stop it. That's a bait track to get Kendrick out. You y'all hyping that shit up yeah. like it's Duppy or something. It's not. It's to get niggas outside. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, yeah. going back to the metro part, that right. shit was funny. Yeah, you know, you're not right. You're not wrong about that. I don't, I, man, you know me. I told you I don't care. I don't care about, you know, fan clubs. You know, I just think, you know, people are excited. You know, they want their guy I to mean, win. Be a fan, but don't drag yeah. us in it. you still not dragging <laughs> because me in we it because I don't care. ain't getting paid by any camp. I don't care what they say. I, that's my thing about it. I'm, I'm still going to call the game for what it is. We talk about where, look, if Kendrick came out and he fucking up along the way, we'll be talking the same energy. 
You know, we talked about it with Wale. We talked about the only nigga in the game that I, I really actually spared and gave mercy to was uh, a nigga like Big Crit. But also, my you get point, what I'm saying? Because of how he was initially jammed up at the beginning of his career with Def Jam, and then uh, the idea of notion of people kind of lightly whiteballing people as well too. I just don't want the groupie antics because y'all didn't show no sympathy to to a bitch when Megan Thee Stallion was getting jumped by everybody in the industry. And including uh, uh, alternative media where some people was lying. Not everybody in alternative media was lying, but some people were. Y'all ain't show no sympathy to that bitch getting shot. Mm-hmm. And right now, like, I'm just saying some niggas act gay. Because, because we're making. What do you mean by that? Be careful. Be careful, ma- Sin. Hold on now. Stop it, Sin. Stop. I got to stop you right there. Let me, let me, let me get it off. <laughs> because we're making this stallion. And if we even told her, we told her, like, you got to, you got to defend yourself. This I would is, say they act closeted. Yeah. This is, this is the United the States. Closeted niggas be fighting women all day. Right. Closeted niggas. Nigga, I know. Yeah. That's all but, I'm saying. But um, you can get off. Do your thing. We're making this stallion. We told nigga, Megan, like, I'm not picking sides. We don't know what's going on. We do know Tori got a violent history. But you got to pick yourself up, girl defend yourself because the United States can have a bully culture but then y'all come here soft shooing with Kendrick and Drake and be like Drake everybody's attacking him like get the fuck out of here well, Drake is supposed no to be a warrior he's supposed to be an MC come with it just like Kendrick gotta come with it well yeah, yeah but here's the other side of it too one of the reasons why like that let us do her own thing I, I could care, give a fuck about fan clubs because I feel like the sensitivity starts to spread if I had to keep addressing it you know, so I've seen, I will say this, to her point though, some of the niggas may be closeted. And again, the reason why I want to say that, I want to make that distinction, because we get gay people, they be all in the chat all the time, I don't give a fuck. But it's the closeted folk that always be the problem. You know, closeted folks be overreacting to shit. So here's this is what I'm saying. When we was roasting, we kept the same energy about Megan and yeah. Nicki Minaj. So Megan, stand all up. All of their fans, the women, took it. They was like, yeah, y'all right. You're right, Prince. Yeah. You're, you're right, Sin. You guys are right. The the, the women that follow Megan and Nikki well, took better. our criticism better than when it came to, like, some of the fellas. No, I do have to address it because, you know, I just wanted to address it real quick before we get back to our main point because it's uh, important. Yeah, cause I don't y'all, want to be forgetting my points either. Y'all bitching about independent media here with our crimes, some of y'all, not all of y'all. Remember, when we did a live stream saying about Drake, and we were the first ones to ever say this, that Drake was the most battle-tested Niggas said we was on Drake's dick. And I just say it one more time. When oh we God. talk about Kendrick, he had the talk. he had the best albums. <laughs> he had the best albums, uh, classic albums out of the big three, yeah. out of uh, the 2010s. Yeah. The niggas say, oh, we are Kendrick's di- uh, dick. And then so on and so forth. We said Future, he makes the best Warlock music. It is what it is. F- uh, Drake uh, can't compete with him on that Warlock shit when it comes to that dark trap sound. And then niggas say we on Future's dick. The reason why I have to say this is because when people are getting paid and, and telling y'all what these artists want you to hear, Dark Crimes is one of the few platforms that's telling you <laughs> from the culture standpoint, not from somebody paying us. Ironically said, too bussy or too busy says, uh, please, let's not start the Megan never got shot. Please, let's just talk about this shit. Look, all I'll say is this, uh, moving on forward, because the reason why I say also, because I, I, I just don't want to forget my points. Uh, I think we're making some great points as far as like we, we want to, you know, have this conversation about the nuances of hip hop and the manipulation of social engineering. And, and now that social media plays into all of this, this and a lot of too. people, we yeah, and a lot of people, yeah, and a lot of people are doing that. Um, yeah, no, no, sin. I actually agree with you. No, I, no, I, I told you, speak your mind, baby. You do your thing. All I'm saying, I'm just, you know, guys, how I talk about it, like, you know, even when I did the previous stream, there were a lot of niggas that were tight. They felt I was hating on Drake. I didn't care. I'm going to keep talking. That's the fuck I do, nigga. I don't give a fuck. I don't care that you listen. If you lost your virginity to take care, good on you, nigga. Like, go ahead. Have and more truth for your head talk. So watch how you speak on my name. No. Yeah. Uh, Forest Hill Drive. Great for you. Yeah. What was it? Wet dreams. He had. What's the song called? Wet dreams. Although a lot of niggas say they can't stand that track. And when she put her. When she put her toes on my thighs, I came. Yeah, ho. Easy money. Oh, Lord, I, no her toes grazed in my thigh. Yeah. And I came so hard for the first time. And I'm not ashamed because I know it's a part of the game. <laughs> Wet dreams. I never knew her name. Like when I she breathed on me, I nutted. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> Yeah, listen, you, you know, for real, uh, Malik says Prince is right. Closet dudes are dangerous. They are, they are more dangerous. I grew I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia. 
it is gay and it, it is gangster at the same time. And so I share some of the stories with some of the fellas I've had to work with or be around or even certain rap spaces and they try to come on to you. And these niggas were some of the most aggressive human beings I ever ran into in my life because they was always disagreeing with me, always trying to like, you know, and I'm like, yo, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? What's wrong with you, nigga? <laughs> oh, man, I'm going I'm to be honest with you, man. It's, <sighs> can, we, can we talk? Right? And it's one of those things. So the reason why I bring that up, look, you know, you may see an openly sassy gay man. You know, and, and some of the niggas, you know, shoot they shot with, with straight niggas. And, you know, it, it is what it is. But it's the closet. Look at Diddy, a closeted right. nigga. But this is hip-hop right? talk. They so, should know we're not against gay people. Like no, 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 no. I'm making a statement because this does tie into the point. Some of the fellas that are, like, overly divested into Drake or even some of these other artists, some of you guys got crushes. Some of you boys are closeted. Cause some of it goes beyond just like yo, I'm a real fan, you know. Like I, I, you know, I really this guy's music helped me get through things. You know what I keep saying? The J Cole niggas, the most balanced niggas to call in. And they did say Cole was gonna lose. Yeah, yeah. They said, Nah, man, we we fuck with him, but we we rather for him to go and get up out of here. Here's the thing about K Dot fans: you never see or hear from them. No, they just support him with the shit drop. Uh, but go ahead. You want to go to your main point before we open up the phone lines? Um, I, I forgot what the fuck it was, uh, to be honest with you. But we can, we can go ahead and get started on the phone calls. We'll open uh, up the phone lines, 903-600-0530. Mm. I'm putting it in here right now. Also, uh, we have our own uh, uh, live on Patreon where we'll be listening to these AI so-called tracks. AI tracks. Sure. Like they did the last time. And we're going to be listening to the leaked verse from Drake where he was shouting out Lucian Grange. Yeah, because me and Lucian, we like Kobe and Shaquille. That's like, I don't think I remember seeing pictures of y'all together like that, but whatever. <laughs> it's real. No, I ran. All right, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and put this out here real quickly. You know, uh, let's go here, folks, too, by the way. Boom, bam, nine. There you go. 903-600-0530. Be clear. Be con concise when you call in, too, by the way, and get straight to the point. I love it. I right. love it. And I we're not going to have too long, too many long calls on this one because we want to get as many people as possible before we do our Patreon stream. Caller, you're here with Thought Crimes. Your thoughts? Good morning. It's Night Night, a.k.a. Uh, with... Mad Man 90. <laughs> What's up, Night Night? <laughs> night Night, go ahead, man. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Uh, I heard that uh, um, that uh, this track, that this leak of uh, Drake, that is real. I I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Okay. And okay. um, I do believe. You know, do you remember what I told you guys? You know, uh, Drake made a biggest mistake. He haven't learned what he did the last time when he mentioned um, Pusha T. Y. I get what you're saying. I just feel like Drake, conceptually, I think his just, I think his roast game is not that strong. I think if he had a stronger roast game, because even if you think about the tradition of certain other folks who didn't have a lot of information on the opposing MC, they s took what they saw and they just tore their physical image apart publicly. And you know, we've seen in a lot of cases that has beaten a lot of people. But with Drake, I don't, I just don't feel that's his style like what Rick Ross was doing. Right. And um, have y'all heard, I mean, not heard, but did y'all see, you know, on Twitter that uh, TDE Reason is getting roasted, you know, and because he uh, he actually showed himself that he's on Drake's side. Yeah, he everybody was, made fun of him. He was a spy all along. Yeah, I told you guys, you know. You said that. You know, and I just got off the phone um, with uh, What's the Dirt yesterday. And um, what's he doing a um, uh, breakdown on this beef too, you know, and, um, uh, he agreed. He said that, you know, what he said that he's not going to, uh, um, uh, doubt me ever again. He said, man, everything that I, that I told him, I'm like, man, he like, he was like, yo, night, night, man, you, man, what's got everything that you told me that, you know, it came true. I'm like, yeah, man. Cause I, you know, you know, I pay attention. Yeah. I pay attention. I'm very smart. You know, I, I, I pay I pay very closely attention to what's going on. And yeah, I listen no, to true. you guys, you know, I listen to you and What's the Dirt, you know. Mm -hmm. You guys only plat hip hop platform that I watch. And I always, you know, uh you know, you know, um, what's gonna watch you guys, but everybody else is just number clickbait. That's I know, good. it's I know it's clickbait and and and, and 
being one-sided in camps. And don't get me wrong, I do respect, just to say this real quick, uh, a night-night, I respect you in your hip-hop game. And I also respect people who are clearly in a camp and admit it. Like, one of the things I love about you is that you say you're in Kendrick camp. camp. I do respect, you know, one th- aspect of uh, Fat Neck Academics where it clearly saying he's in Drake camp. Yeah. If you if you are in any camp, own say it, it probably own only. It. I'm just so a fan, can, though. People I'm can just know. a fan. I'm not in no industry or none of that. I'm just a regular person. Mm-hmm. I'm just, yeah. uh, you know, a fan of Tupac and Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. And I pay, you know, you know, I pay a good attention of what's going on. And I knew that 50 Cent was a, uh, was close to uh, Drake because DJ Who cared. I was like, why are these New York niggas uh, finally coming out and, and, and dissing Kendrick Lamar? I was like, oh. I was like, yo, they all want this West Coast nigga to fall. So they jealous. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we definitely, we appreciate you so much, Night Night. We're going to keep this thing going, man, you know, and we're going to get back at you too. We appreciate you, all right? Uh- yeah, also real quick, Night yeah, Night, is, is there anything else you want to say or drop on us before we get to the next caller? Um, yeah, I did uh, listen to that um, that verse that Drake did with French Montana, and Drake is involved. I, I truly, you know, allegedly, I truly believe that he's involved with the, you know, the, uh, what's his name, Lucien Green? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I truly believe that he's involved in that, too. All right, Allegedly. Night Night. Allegedly. All right, thank all you right. for your commentary, man. You're welcome. All right, you all, 903-600-0530. While we're on the air this early morning at 745 our time, you have the opportunity to call in about a possible another Drake diss. How do you feel about people saying that it's AI like they did the first time around and it turned out to be real? Remember the first time around, somebody like Elliot Wilson said, oh, that is AI. And then the polished version, DJ Academic, delivered to the OVO fan club. So you guys can call in 903-600-0530 if you tried to call in. The lines are opening right now. So y'all can go ahead and get open. Look, uh, let's see here. Uh, folks are online. They're talking about that they feel that uh, – Let's see what else they got. BBL Drizzy is still trending. And again, we will be going further into listening to these said AI tracks on our Patreon. What time, uh, Sam? You said what time we were going to do that? 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to be there on our Patreon. Join us. Just go over there and join and It's going to tell you the time. It's about 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. We're going to get busy with the uh, Patreon stream and talk about leaks. Uh, you know, and uh, again, we are still keeping our eye on that on that Kendrick Lamar disc. Right, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I know, I know from Nola. Yeah, yeah, y'all the other ones too. You know, uh, he says I'm in New Orleans. Uh, this bitch is gangster and gay too. Yeah, it is. It's a real thing. So, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, you know, growing up in a city like that, you know, the first thing somebody gonna use against you if you're from either one of those cities. Hey, I mean, y'all niggas gay out there. You just, and you know, you let them get their shot off, and then you just tear, you roast them after that. That's all you do. But uh, again. We talked about some of the strategy that's been going on, and I love what Stacia uh, uh, said. I'm crediting her with that. I don't want to be accused of Quentin Miller and nobody, but she said, what's up with soft launching a diss record? <laughs> I said, that, that's a brilliant talking point. The diss records are being soft launched, uh, whereas Rick Ross comes from the old school of hip-hop, and I'm just talking about his era particularly, where he just dropped that shit out there. It just, you know, show up on the internet like uh, Ether or whatever the case. And... Um, I do believe that, you know, Drake seemed to be, if the, I personally, Sin and I, we both feel that the, the High Whitney track is real. We do just feel it's incomplete. And it did get leaked. And again, he got people in his camps that I, they just leaking shit too. Well, by that's the way. why when he do a good, he got to be confident and just drop right. it. I think it was a back to back strategy too. Because remember, Charged Up went out there. And then he doubled back around with back to back to try to put more pressure on the other person. And just to say this before, you know, we will try to take some more calls before we drop out. But uh, just to say a couple more things, you got to be confident when you drop, number one. And number two, you you have to also understand the opponent that you're going up against. I do think that uh, the bait track was okay, had a few good moments, but the whole point of the track was to bait Kendrick out. To yeah. come outside, but he needs to drop a second one that actually trends well because so far this is this had the the least amount of foot tracking than all his other disc record. But we also know fat ass Ricky Ross has something to do with that. Caller, you're here with Thought Crimes. What's your thoughts on all this? 
Hey, y'all. This is Tay Tay 1990. What's up? Tay Tay, what's, what's up? Good in the building. What's good with you? Nothing much. Just out here waiting in a Target parking lot to open. So, <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> Bruh, I had to call my uh, youngest brother last night because he's a hip hop connoisseur like you guys. And I was like, what is your thoughts on this beef between Drake and everybody? And he was just, and he kind of put me on game in this like, he just thinks the Rick Ross issue between him and Drake is like very high schoolish. It's like because it's over a woman, and then the future one, he just thinks like, well, that's dumb too because he don't really like future <laughs> like like that like that. But to me, I think my opinion, the beef between Drake and Kendrick, I think that's a deeper. That's like a matter of Kendrick doesn't respect Drake at all as an artist, as a rapper. He's like, why are you here? And I'm tired of people putting me <laughs> compared to you. Like, I'm just tired of it. I actually agree with you. Um, all the other beefs with Drake is over money. Um, why we didn't do an album together. I think he kind of yeah. jealous of me and women. With Kendrick, he truly believes he's better than Drake. And he's like, why are you here being put above me? Um, you know, I feel my body of work is better. And I'm one of the few artists of the 2010s. I didn't need your stimulus package. We only worked on one song together that was on uh, a Good Kid, Mad City. But you can't claim me as anything like some of these other people. So I do agree with you. Whereas the other people, Kodak mad because he, did, he didn't did get a duet with Drake. Right. A lot of people crying because they didn't get Drake's energy. Some people feel that Drake is is a culture vulture. So there's that aspect. But with Kendrick, it's the, it's the only one where it seems like it's deeper um, on some. I, I'm here to prove I'm number one in hip hop. And that 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 you're my son. You're not you're not above me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think just to just to say this here, Tay Tay, you know, to add on to your point, I I, I, I got I, my my angle is this. I actually think all of their issues with Drake is is deeper than um, women or projects. I think it's also having to do with aspects of you know uh, loyalty, money, yeah. and I'm not saying like loyalty like you know in the traditions or what we think. We just think about people dishonoring contracts. You got to remember between these people, they're yeah. losing millions of dollars or they're standing to gain millions of dollars as well. Which goes into you the know, money part. Or right, money and women. Loyalty, right. sleeping with other women, yeah. uh, girlfriends and wives, contracts not honoring them, money part. Yeah, and I do feel um, with, uh, with, with, with Kendrick Lamar, uh, I think, you know, where Drake strategically is at a disadvantage and I, I say I, I could I wouldn't call him quite the LeBron James of the game to the T. Although I know people, I understand why they would make that declaration. Right. Um, but you know, when when they were starting doing things from beyond the arc, you know, then you saw LeBron start improving his shot from beyond the arc as well. He like he started advancing with the game. Whereas we've seen Drake artistically decline in a lot of regards, which is one oh, of the reasons why, gosh. yeah, which is one of the reasons why Kendrick Lamar becomes all the more irritated every time you know, you know, we being mentioned, and I don't want to be mentioned in a space with this guy uh, in that regard. And tactically, Kendrick Lamar would be the toughest opponent for him because some of the same strategies he's been able to use against more emotionally invested. Men, for other reasons, specifically the women, a lot of times um, he had an advantage. And even think about what Drake said in every situation. I'm the bigger artist. Right. This here is a right. situation where they're both visible this here. They have um, and, and people argue that Kendrick Lamar has the better body of work. You know, people have argued that Kendrick Lamar is the most lyrically dexterous. Again, uh, opinions of their own. But like I said before, 10 years ago, Kendrick Lamar kept it in the tradition of hip hop. You get what I'm saying? So uh, right. I, I do feel in that regard, which is why they're doing all these soft launches to these disses. I don't mind them feeding the streamers too. To, let's be clear. None of these men yeah. have launched these diss records on the official YouTube pages. Yes, they are feeding these streamers to let the streamers eat, but it's also specifically Drake. It's also to get a hold of the narrative because he don't want to experience what he experienced with the Pusha T. You are hiding a child during that social media era of roasting. He has PTSD from that. So, of course, he's going to feed all of the top streamers uh, to, to, to get quick, ahead of the um, the wave in the, in the narrative. Before uh, you have the last word call, I also would say that Drake did make a mistake by not going after Kendrick back then. 
I think Drake was too focused yeah. on, on the old heads that he revered that a lot of them embarrassed him. Like Pusha T, yeah, he's a part of the Clips, a legendary duo group, and we love Pusha as an MC, but you could have ignored Pusha because that was whole that was a whole setup that we were the first ones to talk about in 2018. If he would have focused on Kendrick, because Kendrick wasn't trying to set up yeah. Drake. This is the problem sometimes Drake has with his scorpionic energy. You up mm-hmm. here going after these old heads that you revered because you trusted uh uh Ye at one time, Kanye. And they set you up in Wyoming where if you would have just went after Kendrick, it just would have been a pure MC battle, you know, one on one. Cause that's what, what uh Kendrick was looking uh wanted to do back on control. Instead, you focus on these old heads that set you up. So, you know, that's an interesting mm-hmm. dynamic there. But what's your last uh thoughts, caller? My last thoughts, I'm like, wow, we, we actually have a beef today. Like, we actually have, like, a hip-hop rap beef for, like, the 2020s. I'm like, damn, it must be, like my brother said, like, and I agree, it's, it, it's low. Hip-hop is just, it's just not good. It's at a stagnant stage. And I'm like, but I agree with y'all, it's almost extra tech. It's almost like it needs to decline to be dead, and then I'm just hoping for a rebirth of it, because I just... Yeah. Yeah, so I'm also interested, like, yeah, in the esoteric aspect of, like, Kendrick and Drake, like, you know, what energy does that bring in, you know, pertaining to the art? Well, listen, I'm going to be real with you all. Um, You know, toxic Scorpio niggas, it's not good. It's not a good year for you all. And remember, the Virgo (laughs) said at the beginning of the year, what did... What did uh, Cat Williams do at the beginning of the year? He set everything off. This will be the year of truth. Right. Remember that? Yeah. So um, and again, I also feel that, you know, my personal opinion, and again, I don't know, Joe, but I think he also there's an American um, Americana cultural approval or lack of approval problem. So when he comes into the game, he immediately wanted to be approved culturally by the Jay Z's and the Nas's and, 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 and put himself to to see those like I'm a made man now, you know, and <clears throat> have different forms of existentialism. And uh, also, Drake, let's be real. Part of part of his appeal is his confidence. But let's can, can we be honest? If you look at his early stuff, you see the old videos floating up when he's talking about, yeah, you know, when they say like my man's in them, like it's it's ignorant. Like everybody yeah. knows that Drake has a, you know, one yeah. of them spoiled princes from the princess diary problems. Yeah. Like he has a very like there's a there's an, an, an entitled brattiness about him that is also latent in all of his music and how he moves too. Like he, there's got, a, an, he got a Leo ascendant. Yeah, there, yeah, there's an entitlement there. So I can actually see Drake coming into the culture and looking at Kendrick Lamar and thinking like, ew, what is that? Like, no, no, who that, cares, but right? that's what he was. Yeah. It's like, I want, I want right? to go after so, the big dog. Yeah, he just wanted to say, look, you know, I'm already a made man. I'm, I'm, I'm already in the big leagues, right? And, you know, again, bit him in the ass later because now he got a 10-year problem that he got to deal with. Right, because them, you know uh, them, 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 them old keep... heads, <laughs> them big dogs he was talking about didn't play fair, and he yeah. and he got embarrassed, you know, so he does have to be careful with that. But I just want to say this real quick, too, and thank you for calling in. I would have to say, yeah. um, I have to say that Drake has to remember you made Pusha T hot. Pusha T, of course, legacy was is with the with the clips is there, but you focused on Pusha instead of focusing on Kendrick, and that's a mistake that he has to live with because now on, Pusha Sin. is going to be in the history books not yeah. only for the clips Sin. but also for the story of Sin. Adidas. I know, Sin, but all right, Sin, but you know what he's saying is ignorant. Caller, you're not live. Go. Here you here on. What up, though? What up, though? What up, though? This is Gangsta Astrology and Rap Beat. Starting off today by saying shout out to Big Sean and man, oh man, I went to Dreamville. Of course, I was I was having the time of my life. Then I was hugely disappointed at the end when J Cole got on stage. Right. But we passed that right now. Yeah. Um, the light skin boy that came down and everybody and people for some reason ain't giving him the credit that he deserved to get for this. Now you we 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 looking at. We're looking at, even if his song was mid, he got jumped by about 100 niggas. And anybody that's getting jumped, if they just fight back, you got to give them the credit. If they just fight back, he's not running, not tucking his tail, 
we've seen the person that had the better better lyrical ability touch his tail. So it ain't about the ability, it's about the heart. Who, it's wait, about wait, the heart. Quick, hold, on, hold on, hold on, real quick. What, who took their tail? I'm just curious. I'm, I'm from your perspective. Jay Cole. Yeah, yeah, he okay. did. He, he took Cole. Cole. He took. He, he nip tuck. Jay Cole. And then look, and then all of that spiritual garbage went out the window when he appeared on the part two of the Drake disc after he done been on tour with the man. Hey, I do want to say this too. What I do think that was foul, what Drake did. Don't make you think, you, don't make somebody think you got their back. You mean Jay Cole? Yeah, with, uh, my, my bad, Jay Cole. What Jay Cole did was whack. Don't make somebody think you got their back and they think it's going to be, even though some people said, well, Cole, Cole was being manipulated. Who gives a fuck? You still said you was going to be in the paint with Drake and then you fall. Uh-uh, no. Wait, no, just real quick. No, you can't. I, you, and okay. Then, and right. then you fold and say, I pull the white flag. You know, so far, all these guys saying they're going to keep it hip hop, except for ASAP. <laughs> but that's why I'm glad Drake ignored ASAP Rocky on his uh, dis, uh, dis bait record. You, <laughs> but so far, everybody else is saying they're going to keep it hip hop. And I do think, you know, you know, Cole uh, backing out like that was, was a bit uh, lame. Go ahead, caller. Man, look. I, I I don't buy that. I do not buy that last minute coming into Tiffany garbage. He's been calling ass for the last three years. He's been talking about how great he was, how can't nobody mess with him, how he going to hit them direct like a call ID for the last three years. He didn't yeah. at the last minute suddenly have an epiphany. Can you know what I'm saying? Let me, let and that's what right I don't there. respect. Let me pause you. Let me, I, I love where you, I love the energy you Agreed. called in. At. But let me, let me get you before you transition over, right? Let me, let me get you before you do your pick and roll, right? Like Caitlin, right? Listen, think about what's going on right now. What, what, they, what did they just call Drake? Do you think J. Cole want to be a part of being called two white men? He didn't want to be called a white man. That's why he tripped out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, J. Cole, but, no but, damn but still, That's still a coward nah, move, though. No, but let me just be but real you with you. Let me friend, friend, on, he didn't want to get Cole a white like, man because people be thinking Come Cole on. is all black. He didn't yeah. want Come on, you know that's the first thing that's going to happen. Look at the two white men trying to take over hip hop. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. But he, but, but no, nah, but he, it, it's one thing if he dropped out, it's a whole nother thing when you clear your birth. To be on on, on on somebody's uh work that's going at your man well, that's a whole you. nother thing let, let me stop you i love your energy again i love this but you know and if sin want to jump in she can but listen i want, I want to add this too because I, I love these narratives that you're bringing in that i do see on the internet and i'm glad that you have a chance to speak it because i do want to address it look we got to lead that up to the calculating dark virgo homie you saw how long you gotta remember damn near we don't trust you and part two came out like within the same month so in live time they got to see the reaction and that nigga that that nigga metro booming that nigga is like he's, he's like some Darth city and shit he sequenced the tracks of that album to lead up to red leather so even if j cole recorded that fucking verse last year or at the beginning of the month, and he just went on tour like he normally does. He didn't foresee this beef all the way coming out like this, right? Mm -hmm. Why would, and then based on the optics, look what you said. I want to present it in that manner because Metro clearly, clearly, he cannot stand this nigga Drake. I feel he hasn't right? liked Drake for a long time. <laughs> I, think he, I can't stand this That nigga <laughs> put no complaining on the last track, damn near, on uh, Heroes, uh, Not All Heroes Wear Cake. I so, actually felt he didn't want Drake on that album at all. Yeah, because so how he sequenced that fucking track, that, that, that album, that, it, so it looks like J. Cole switched sides. But so, technically, he did because. But but he did. He did because he, <laughs> he still did. had to clear it. He still had to clear it. Well, you know, if we, if I make, though, if it was already clear though, do you get what I'm saying? Because if you read about how Metro and and go watch some of his interviews, how he, um, how what he does from his studio. First of all, a lot of his instrumentals are all, the samples are already clear. He said he makes sure he has all that laid out. He handles business very quickly so he can roll things out very fast. Well, Prince is saying just real quick, if people didn't know, but, this, but, this, oh, this, well, no, real oh, quick, call it, this too had old beats on there, 
And um, the that mixtape. Yeah, listen yeah. to the mixtape. Them beats sound like they were from 2016, and, and Cole, 2017. And old Cold Verse was old, but but nonetheless, Prince and I said this even on our, our other stream. Cole still ran, and he still left Drake on his own. It was still a bitch move. Hey, look, so, this, this, that that a lot of people miss. And I want to get to the astrology on this because the astrology on this is deep, right? But a lot of people miss when um um in in, in that push up leak song, a whole lot of those bars was for J. Cole. Yeah, I get it. Drake did Drake did double, triple, and quadruple on unconscious on that song. He was saying one thing that applied to two or three people. Um, all the way, but all he the way. Some of it out with the official one, which I thought was a mistake. The original leak one, uh, I thought lyrically was great. I think he kind of cut some of the cold uh, bullets out on the official one. Then he added that switch up and beat um, at the end. I think he should have kept all the shots for Cole in there because if by you bowing out to me, you know. Turning on the cheek and all that shit. That to me, you on the other side now. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Can I, can I say this, man? Play it. I love it because you went to Dream. Thing is, yeah, you when, went, when he, I, yeah, I was at Dream. Listen, yeah. I, I made a, a, I had a hoodie and I had a jacket. Dream, you know those no smoking signs, yeah, yeah, no yeah. smoking signs. I had Kendrick picture in the middle of that. All right. <laughs> Picture in the middle of that no smoking sign. People was like, "Damn, that jacket hard as hell." You was all the way in. He was ready for the war. Well, I'm North Carolina, Carolina, so up. I'm North Carolina, so you know what? Hey, 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 I'm going to be honest with you because, like, I really believe in, you know, I am a, a black man. But I will say this. Be careful, though. You may get a situation with Cole and Drake, though. You have to be careful. It's going to be one. Cole it's going to be one because Cole got to redeem it. Cole didn't apologize to Drake. He apologized to Kendrick. And that was Drake, fucked up, too. He exactly. didn't say, I'm sorry, Drake and Kendrick. I'm yeah. sorry, Drake, that I have to bow, and I'm sorry, Kendrick, that I went after you. He just said, I'm sorry, Kendrick. That was so fucked up to Drake. But I'm just saying, though, like, when right. we heard and the then, bars, then he heard said, bars on, the, on the track that got leaked, I heard a bunch of bars for J. Cole, and I the bars that made sense for J. Cole wasn't the ones that people thought was for Kendrick. Kendrick already said, fuck the big three. So when people say, like, exactly. oh, he said it's me and me and I remove you, Kendrick already exactly. said, fuck the big three. So how can you remove, exactly. remove me if I said, fuck it? He was saying that for Cole. He said, you ain't a part of the big three. Exactly. No he said, exactly. he said SZA is, he said, uh, 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 Travis Scott is, and he said 21 Savage. And he said, I don't yeah. even know what Cole was talking about. That dot shit wasn't that hard. But but I will say, the right. mistake, wait, real quick, the mistake. No, he said he that dot was weak as fuck. And he ta he talking about the apology. But the mistake that Drake did do is Drake is the one who changed disc records when he did back to back. Remember, before Drake disc records, it didn't there have to be a club mix or the beat didn't have to be hot. The lyrics only had to be hot, and that was it. Because Drake changed the atmosphere where now it got to be a good song. Push ups lyrically was good. But sonically, it was okay. And Drake is the one who changed that standard. This is the reason why. But, but it wasn't an official what? drop, though. He didn't. Wait, wait, it wasn't wait. an official drop. Wait, wait. I know, but the official drop beat was better, but it was still okay. Because remember, Drake back to back and even Duppy trended way better than this. Now, one can say, oh, well, the only reason why maybe it didn't trend as good as those is because Rick Ross came out and intercepted. But Drake was the one. Who changed that formula? And remember, everybody else paying attention. This is why Kendrick didn't do the jazzy type of stuff. That's why he came out on a Metro beat with like that because he's prepared to use Drake's formula against him. So people do have to keep that in mind too. Yeah, go ahead. Go but ahead, look, man. Drake, ahead, ne still, he still, ne he still never officially dropped nothing. He I still, everything is still just a leak. Well, I, I get what he you get, said. He really, he, he it and it's like y'all said it was big. No, but he did. He never really officially dropped it. It's not on his page. No, you know what no, I'm saying? No, he no, not. No, no, he no, not. No, no. I want you. No, no. I want you to know what the strategy is. 
the strategy is like if I'm Drake, you need somebody like academics. Academics, academics has a the drop. He's got a big voice in the game. You gotta you gotta say that that is what it is. He's doing that. People say, oh, he's feeding the streamers. No, it's that. No, nah, nigga, that's to get control the narrative. I need to control these loose motherfuckers online. Because if I if I can control the narrative, and maybe my shit ain't that strong, or maybe they can keep working something for me, it's an, it's all an art of war tactic. That's it. Right, and it officially dropped on academics. That's what we're making it uh, make it clear here real quick. Because when we talked about the leak, we, we said it was him when... Elliot Wilson was lying, saying it was an AI. And then later on, academics, when he was live, Drake came in and told him, no, this was, this is, I, that leak was me. And here's the official drop. Right. And then academics okay. played the one with the new beat. But go ahead. Okay. So here's the astrology, right? And, and this, this ties in to the whole, to the show that y'all was doing as far as, um, as far as the stuff that's going on in, um, in Iran in the in the middle east and all of that stuff too right really all of this stuff is going off of the same energy because what we're talking talking about about, what we're talking about is a civil war right um the last time that pluto and the last time that uranus was both in the same place that they are was during the american revolution that's the last time that they was in that place together right and uh and, and, and with them being in that place together, what we got? One of them in Gemini, right? Um, when our when our characters here, one of the main ones that dropped this that dropped this this big ass this big ass bomb, like J. Cole said on stage. You know what I'm saying? It was working out of that Gemini energy, right? Um, so that same that same thing, the the American Revolution. What was that? That was a civil war. That was a civil war with Britain. That was Britain fighting against Britain. That was a civil war, which at the same time became what was known as the American Revolution. And we in that state again. You know what I'm saying? And it's only about to heat up. So yeah, yeah. everything, enjoy, enjoy the sweet time and the peace time or the appearance of peace that people have right now inside of the United States because shit is about to get ugly. You know, no, it, we this. think it's ugly now, yeah, but it's it about to really get ugly. Well, you already see it in entertainment, and I will say this, and I just want to preface this for you all to know about this energy out here. Uh, yesterday was the seventh anniversary of Kendrick Lamar's most commercially successful album, Damn. So he's on his vegan mm-hmm. cycle, so there's a great chance that this could be another celebration tour for him. I'm just, we're just putting it. These are things that we right. talk about on our Patreon. And, by so, way, and, 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 and just Kendrick, to put that out there real quick, caller, just to say that because B more uh, stated all of these things with Pluto and Uranus and all this other stuff. She's broken this down several times. And you can also, she has the information she'll put into the chat, but just to let people know okay. how the energy cycles go uh, with it. But back to the hip hop side of the game player. I actually Your believe, point. I do believe Cole is going to slide some bars at Drake. I really believe that. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. That that he will is. destroy his fucking career. If it, I mean, I'm not it's saying not, not to you and Prince. I'm just saying not. That would be a bad idea. But go ahead, caller. No, he he gonna he gonna throw some bars at it because he's conflicted and he and, and, and he's not. Sure. But I told y'all when I said I think that was gonna. I definitely didn't think that was gonna be the surprise. But I said Dreamville Fest is this weekend, and he and, and he's an Aquarius. Aquarius rules the shock factor. So it's going to be a big ass surprise there. I didn't think that was going to be the big ass surprise. I said the surprise was going to be you know, that Drake was going to come out of something like that. But if you listen to uh, on, on the Warrior Mal, I think one of them is Drake's man. And he said he asked Drake, was he going to Dreamville? And Drake's response was, you think I feel because the energy seemed real weird. You know what I'm saying? So okay. I, I believe that Drake is tapped in as far as from an energy perspective. You know, yeah, and, 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 and 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 he, he going listen, hard. He, he don't listen to his intuition though because he felt that same bad energy and he went and he still went to uh, Wyoming and got and got uh, played and then you know he put. Maybe he'll listen this time. Go ahead, finish your point. Uh, he was he he was young because he 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 made, he moving a little better now and, um, than he was. And really, all of this was a gift. 
if all of them people didn't go at Drake, then the bar for Drake would have been a whole lot higher. Now they successfully made him the underdog. And I don't even want to talk about the um the fat police guy that's stealing people's identities. I don't care if he can rap. You know what I'm saying? He's a police. And I ain't got no problem with nobody being a police. I got a problem with being with with, with some if you're gonna be a police and rap, just come out and make that known. Don't try to hide it and don't try to steal um other people's identities that's doing time and that's in, in physical enslavement. Why you still in their goddamn identity talking about, you know, um, the real Escobar, but you ain't saying the reason why you know him is because you was his rock officer. You know what I'm saying? You ain't, you ain't putting, putting that information out there. I just want to so, say thank you, you know, go eat in. those chicken wings. <laughs> I was going to say thank you for calling, but also thank you for saying that because a lot of people don't like that Rick Ross had stole a real OG's, uh, name and all that that was corny you know and rick ross forever has that on that target on his ass uh because of doing that so thank you for bringing that in as well i'll say this um i think him being a ceo is nothing because look at reggie right you know we know that corrupt law and mafia and crime and law and police have always been working together so i'm not but i do think the biggest issue is him and the identity of the real Rick. that's the thing the identity of the real rick ross i think that's the bigger issue rick ross big as l like you said the ceo like all them be uh, with the feds and all that other shit even drake has to talk to government intel in Canada, right. but that whole stealing that other guy's identity, it is going to be something that uh, well, Drake can use to his advantage. Well, you know, uh, and, and, and 404, shouts out to you, by the way, Atlanta. But look, I'm going to say this real quick before we go to the next caller. Remember, uh, well, if you guys go look it up, uh, one of the reasons why Rick Ross is using Ricky Rosé uh, is because uh, the real Rick Ross had to file a lawsuit against him. You know, Freeway Rick Ross, but that's another thing. But you know, but you also have you know Freeway from Philadelphia too. By the way, I don't know how I I don't know how I feel about it overall. I just think Rick Ross's disc record was funnier than Drake's. Hey, caller four hundred four, you're now live. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? What's going on, Solomon? What's going on, son? What's up? We're excited to hear about your thoughts on all of this. Ah oh, man, I got a lot of thoughts on this. So, first off. I want to get at Solomon because his last stream, which, I, you know, I'm a big fan. I watch y'all all the time. So, um, but, but Solomon, you said that um, Drake, like he had like this, this weird energy where he's talking about, he's going to have all his chain on when you see Kendrick and all this. Right. But my thing is Kendrick is the one that started that. He's the one that came at him with that aggressive energy and Drake is just matching it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but I, I, I'm Come looking on. at the totality of the situation. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. And I, I'm gonna, I love it. I appreciate mm-hmm. you definitely too, man. Especially for for what part of where you at in Atlanta? Uh, I'm in uh, Gwinnett. All right. Okay. Okay. I got you. I see what you. Yeah, mean. I'm I'm from New York though, but but oh. I've been here for a minute, so you can say I'm from the A. I, that's cool. That's cool. It is what it is, right? But listen. Yeah, I'm I'm half and half, but but my <laughs> thing is. Right? But, <laughs> I would say this. Well, it's, I mean, look, I, I, this is how I might think about it. Because I know when Omaretta did, I'm not. At, uh, that's not Atlanta. A lot of people got tight about it. But I said, look, she from, she from where I'm from, the West Side. So I get it. You know what she said was the truth before all the redistricting and all this other shit. And uh, yeah, you know, black people yeah. fled to D.C. Black people, wherever black people go move, they make their own meccas. And I think Atlanta's one of them, just like D.C., Baltimore, and Chicago. But I'm I'm gonna say this too. If you think about it. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm going to I'm going to flip what you say, right? And I keep saying it. If yeah. you go to first person shooter, Drake's last verse was very dark. It was very dark. Yeah. And not only that, Drake has been very threatening for uh, with his energy, even with his whole thing with you know doing that mocking of the extentacion ghost rituals that ghost magic shit he keep doing if that boy yeah. did 10 for 10 for let's keep it let's keep it 100 on this one Kendrick okay. Lamar comes from an official background Drake does not and we talk right. about hood politics all right when right Drake come on man let's be real do you think Houston Atlanta <sighs> Vegas would recognize first person shooter Drake Nah, of course not. It's okay, two totally different right. energies. So but, if you but, jump but out Solomon, there, dog. all I'm saying is yeah. this. That's like me. As, as much shit I didn't 
been through growing up in Atlanta, as much death I didn't see and had to experience firsthand. If I go talking shit to another nigga and the set in his background, I knowing the psychology of violence in yeah. our in our world and especially in, yeah. in quote unquote black American crime culture. Right, which is really, honestly, you got all types of crime codes, but I'm speaking to us and our criminal right. behaviors at times. I expect for that nigga to show his teeth as well. What I just oh, don't yeah. like yeah. about all of this situation, Drake didn't been around yeah. here talking about death, murder, kill. Uh, I got hitters and shooters and the wassas. You heard his meltdown verse. Yeah. This nigga, Kendrick, come from an official background. He cut his hair off. He took off the Jesus crown. He got the hat on backwards. You see him wearing the red. And he's saying, I'm moving with uh, uh, two T's and I'm into snatching chains. He says, we're going back to the street. Now people are saying Drake being jumped because now a dark element has been activated on the other side in the room as well. Drake, to me personally. In this regard, I don't have a problem with anything that he says. I'm, I'm all for it. If you feel you can knock out people, go here for it, nigga. Right? But please do not complain when the aggression is matched in the ring. The difference, reason why I think people unconsciously saying this man is being jumped, because subconsciously we know Drake is Toronto Canadian. WAC 100 even yeah. said the six isn't even a real place. The fact that it was a shout out from the weekend based on Zone 6 in Atlanta. So we got to even look at that. And we I'm seen not from him. Canada, so I don't know if this right. is real or fake. Yeah, y'all yeah, Canadians, y'all gonna have to tell yeah, us that. I'm not saying that they don't have a gangster. They get people. There's crime everywhere. But I yeah. think the reason why people feel a little type of way when Kendrick Lamar put up his Alice Walker books, he did put his right? Alice Walker and he the says, purple color, the, the color purple books away. And he hearing gun <laughs> bars on the other side across the United States. He said, "Is that what we doing?" And we know historically what the West Coast has represented. Come on, two of hip hop's yeah. biggest stars have died in the West Coast. Right, and also just to add this, and I'm gonna have let you take the floor, caller, because I know there's a lot for you to address to what what uh, Prince said. But I would mm. say, uh, with Drake, it's a fifty fifty. Um, I don't think Drake is necessarily getting jumped when it comes to Kendrick. I think people gotta remove that that out of the way when it comes to Kendrick. Now, when it comes to the guys who are crying about Drake because they can't make money with him anymore. Absolutely, mm -hmm. they trying to jump Absolutely. up. The Kodaks, the other niggas who said, it couldn't get an album with Drake, so now I'm turning against him. Those people should be ridiculed, absolutely. But Kendrick Ben said, even 10 years ago, when he name, name dropped all the rappers, that he this Ben competition for him, and he always wanted to get into a fun rap battle with, with Drake. It's gotten a little bit darker since then, but... You know, you know, Kendrick has always been honest with that. But go ahead, uh, call. And also, I want to say side note. Uh, I stand corrected. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was I was talking a mile a minute. But Quentin Miller, the six, the six. That be that's how it's become known yeah. in that regard. It's a Quentin Miller thing. But call. I want you to go ahead uh, uh, with your thoughts. But I, I'm just saying, it's not okay. that. Uh, um, it's not that Kendrick went dark. Kendrick responded with darker energy because I keep saying to people, go listen to Drake's last verse on First Person Shooter. Listen to beat changes. He, he's transforming into a fucking magical wolf dog on the damn video. He got the fur coat on. He, and he, he's bitches are bitches. The women are bitches, which is representing the dogs in the elevators and all this other shit. Look, let's keep it real. Drake has been talking real gangster and greasy for the past five years. He has. You're right. But... But what I'm saying is this, right? And I I hear what y'all saying, right? But let's not act like this is not the third attempt. This is like the third coup that they trying to get him out of here, right? Because I know there was one before that, but the one that I remember is the Kanye, when Kanye and Jay-Z and his wife, they tried to step on, on his release date, right? They all tried to group up <laughs> against him to get him out of here, right? Yeah. He dropped Scorpion. So that yeah. failed. Then you got this one now. So it's like, I get what y'all saying, right? But he has no choice to embrace that dark energy because if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to fight all these guys. You know what I'm saying? They, and I know you're saying they're not jumping him, but, I mean, he might be the only rapper we ever seen in rap history where you have a group of guys that's really trying to get him out of there, and he, he don't got no help. He's fighting everybody by himself. Well, so he got I wouldn't say that was on. It happened to Nas uh, when the industry tried to get rid of him, and Nas had to come by himself with Ether because... 
even the people he thought was cool with him was turning against him. That's why he said, I've been uh, uh, beat up, shot down, left and forgotten. And he was on Hot 97, uh, Hot 97 screaming about, y'all niggas know about R. Kelly and Jay-Z. Why y'all trying to get rid of me after everything I've done for this culture? So it did. It, it happened to Nas and a, a a few other people before. But go ahead and finish yes, your point, and, but, then and then I'll say, you know, my thoughts. Go ahead. Okay. But 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 Nas wasn't, and, and shout out to Nas. You know what I mean? Shout out to Nas. But he's not on Drake's level commercially. I'm talking about like this guy got the most number ones, right? We we know that already, right? That's cool. Like, what y'all expect him to do? And then when he when he gets into this battle, right? You got Cole over here tucking his tail, and I, I fuck with Cole. Like, I've been, you know, I fuck with Cole. I've been listening to him since his music wasn't even on, on DSPs. It was on YouTube. You had to, with no title, you had to find it. You know what I mean? And you got Cole jumping out the whip because I know he's scared. He's scared to death. So it's like, I got to give Drake props because he's the only one that's really showing his teeth. I know y'all said, you know, Kendrick, and Kendrick need to drop. Kendrick need to drop. Look how long he's been chastising Drake. Did he drop the control verse 10 years ago? We've been waiting. Uh, allegedly, it's this mythical this record that's going to end Drake. Drop the record already. What you well, waiting that, for? That shows you how methodical Kendrick is. Kendrick didn't drop because first, let me let me say why Kendrick gets respect and none of these other niggas do, and we have to put respect on Kendrick's names when it comes to him versus Drake. Yeah, I'm, talking about, the, I'm, talking, about, I'm talking about none of the other niggas that are going up against uh, Drake. Kendrick mm. could have jumped on the bandwagon back then against uh, uh, Drake. Believe it or not, Kendrick had nothing to do with Wyoming, and he had nothing to do with Meek Mill when Meek Mill was being a little bitch, two-faced Right, bitch. I believe that. Right. Kendrick right. only is responding and only getting into this because only because Drake did not handle the control verse well when Kendrick said, I'm just playing, guys. This is just for sport. We need to all just battle each other. And some people got very, very immature about it, and Drake was one of those people. And also, Drake underestimated Kendrick. So with Kendrick and Drake, it only stems from that. Everybody else has been trying to get rid of Drake, but also Drake doesn't listen. You know, here on Thought Crimes a long time ago with Meek Mill, we said, Drake, they're trying to get rid of you. He still yeah. went and gave those niggas hits. We said with Wyoming, right. we said, yo, they trying to set you up and they want you to fuck up out of here. When we stated that, we Drake, did, it's, it's in our, you know, people can see it. We dropped that, uh, the Drake yeah, last I remember. dance I watched before that all this shit took place right, the, the first time around. Right, in 2018, we warned a the nigga then that the, these old heads don't like you, but Drake was too much of a Kanye West stand. He didn't listen. And they <laughs> don't, so Drake has empowered his enemies. And the, I, I think with, when it comes to that history, the only person we can't get, you know, messed up in all of this is Kendrick because Kendrick had nothing to do with Wyoming. Kendrick had nothing to do with uh, Meek Mill. Kendrick's perspective yes. only stems from the control shit. Well, yeah. And this is why but, when it comes to Kendrick and Drake, it's the it's the purest uh, battle that's what I want to see. the other stuff. Well, the ring, I want to bring so this up, to, too, just, to, just yeah. to say this, man. I'm just going to say this part. Drake, I mean, Kendrick Lamar's thing is I'm the better boxer. He's been he said he's been saying the same shit for ten years. Now everybody else has been mixed up in tea culture concerning Drake because his shit does bleed into Rihanna and Serena Williams. Yeah, and, uh, it's exactly. his shit, it, yeah. Kendrick shit is clean. He's been with his high school sweetheart, whatever his personal life is. This whole said with high Whitney shit. If Drake yeah. wants to go in there, I would advise him not to. If he want to open up a can of worms, because that's going to take it to a dangerous level for him uh, when it comes to these things. So I, do, I do look. I'm gonna be real with you, and I do notice because I, I assess all of the camps uh, as far as I think the Kendrick stands. Uh, a lot of them are real quiet because they're just waiting, you know. And yeah. I think. Usually, Meek Mill stands are very. I think they actually far more emotional than OVO stands. When when an OVO <laughs> fanboy like is screaming at the top of their lungs, Drake is my guy. Consistently, you can see if you look at Drake's numbers, you're like, man, I can see why they really fuck with him. You get what I'm saying? I can see why they want to see yeah. him keep winning. When I see all of this shit that's been exposed about Meek Mill. And the, the niggas are still being defensive with tears in their eyes in the chat. I'm like, what the fuck is yeah, wrong with that nigga? This nigga look crazy yeah, right now. I wouldn't stand behind yeah. it. The J. Cole fans, they're like, dog, man, he disappointed me. I'm just going to uh, move he's on, so right? For that. I lost yeah. so much respect. Right, but here's my thing about it. We cannot, this is where we say we can't, we, we have to separate hip-hop from the bullshit. 
Kendrick mm. and Drake on wax, it's hip hop. Everything right. else got mixed in. Yeah, everything shit. else is Telemundo from, yeah. right. you yeah. know, with, with whatever that. The, yeah, whatever the fuck so, is going on with Metro and Drake, I'm sure there's some other real personal things going on there. I think so, where uh -huh. Kendrick is showing more aggression with his teeth is that if you're starting to allude to, like, violence can happen out of all of this, and the nigga told you 10 years ago, like, bro, it's just hip-hop, let's move on forward, Y'all niggas didn't respond. And even the niggas that, they, Pat Poo said uh, to Kendrick Lamar, your uncle touched you. Like, he was just what? saying all type of crazy and shit. didn't get mad and said, I'm going to uh, kill Pat Poo. He yeah, said, all right, you know, he said, that was nah. verse. He said, nah, it's just all love, you man. Have so, so, yeah, that's, all, that's all he was saying. But Drake is the one that kind of didn't really address yeah. it directly. And then but, because it's been annoying Drake, because Kendrick didn't want you know, that nigga didn't won the, the, the Pulitzer all Prize. That, yeah. He didn't won Oscars and Grammys and shit. So now you got to deal with this nigga. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, yeah, but but so what I'm saying, right? So yeah. let me ask y'all. Does Drake come out of this victorious? Um, With Kendrick, it cannot be said definitively because uh, – it's hard to get him. Everybody else is, is going to be easy. If you if you put if you pull out the Puffstein shit with Rick Ross, the stealing identity shit. If you get past wait, y'all think he got to respond to that? No, I think he got to get somebody else to because Rick Ross is the master troll. So let's say if he say fuck them, I just want to focus on Kendrick, Future, and um the weekend and Metro. He gonna have to have somebody in his in his corner who can out troll Rick Ross, which is why he got. He he got uh, Drake was able to get Fifty Cent to be like, yo, I'm right. fucking with you. I'm gonna stand on you with this. So he needs Fifty to, to to troll Rick Ross to get him out of the way because Rick Ross was dangerous. He did actually get in the way of Drake's bait track rollout with that the the biracial nose and the the surgery and all that other shit. And and I just also just want to say this before I uh, just give it to to. Prince to say what he thinks of who who's going to be victorious because I think it's going to be very hard to call with Drake and Kendrick. It's going to be really based off of who has the best disc records and and nothing else. Uh, um, mm. You talked about people who had the industry go up against them. It wasn't just Nas, Nas, Tupac. Uh, let me try to go into my memory bank and see if there's anybody else besides Tupac and Nas. Mm. You have anybody else, Prince, besides Tupac and Nas? That that the whole space that against? Drake currently sits at right now is called the premier space. I don't want to hit. I'm, I'm just being honest. I will blame it on us as millennials and, and the Gen Zers. Like there is some moist wet wipe shit in our culture. Yeah, Jay Z. He's Canadian. You know he's going to God MC at the time of takeover, and he said it himself. Yeah. For people to see me completely as king, I have to destroy this little nigga Nas because he's the golden child from New York. And he tried right? to use all the right. industry against right. Nas. Right, but everybody else was taking shots at Jay-Z the same way they did 50 Cent as well. Oh, so 50. That's, yes. that space Happy that, to 50. Yeah, so that's why I said there is some boo-boo, nanny-nanny, wet wipe shit going on here. What's happening to Drake is no different than what they did to 50, Jay-Z, Nas, and Tupac. And even Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls had to shoot back at Wu-Tang niggas, Daru the Damager, Damager type niggas. There's a lot of niggas. So when you sit in that space where you're supposed to be at the top of the hill, that's traditional. It's the same thing with LeBron James. It's the same thing in any context. Yes, yes, yeah, Solo, but not like Solomon, Man, but not come like on, this. don't do that. Don't say not like this. No, come on, actually, not like come this. On, <laughs> Tupac come died. On. Ja wait, wait, wait. Three times, though? No, no, no. Wait, call it. Drake is actually having it the easiest because Pac is bigger oh, than Drake. Oh, that's crazy. Wait, no, real quick. Pac is bigger than Drake, and he got killed. Yeah. Uh, 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 Nas almost got lost his whole career, but he survived, and now he's you know he 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 left off with his legacy and being an icon. Fifty Cent got shot. He got shot even multiple when he, times, and even his when... own city. Turned their yeah, back against him. Even when he came yeah, back, I and, I, and I do want to respond to your question because Sin, she did a great job. But I'm, I'm gonna respond to this. Here's the thing about it. Yeah. Before Drake, before Drake, a rap, a rapper's average career was two to five years. Drake has mm -hmm. had an unprecedented run in hip hop, fifteen years, fifteen years. Yeah. The only other people yeah. that rival that are his peers, Kendrick Lamar. 
We've seen it with the Migos. Uh, I don't know hold about on, that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I get it. You like Drake. I get it. I have no problem with that. No, no, no. It's not about liking Drake. It's not about liking Drake. I'm it's just Kendrick, this... Kendrick. I think what the I'm caller gonna... is about yeah. the, the gang up. That's yeah. what he's, no, he's no, saying. No, 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 no. Think about it. No, no. It's not the gang up. With Kendrick, he's not He's not consistent. He's not as consistent no, as think Drake. About it. He no, took no, a no. five-year Here, break. Here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. One could argue one of the reasons why Drake has more bad albums than Kendrick because he overly floods and saturates the market. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. th that can be flipped too. I know people like to use the other thing, but look, uh, J. Yeah. Cole sat down for a moment to go ride bicycles around New York, right? Yeah. I'm so, actually yeah. agree with where right. being a premier doesn't mean how long you mm -hmm. took a break. The whole the whole thing is the fact that Kendrick is the only person that could compete with Drake mm -hmm. shows you how mm -hmm. Drake and and Kendrick are both premier and equal. In so that space. here's the other thing too: a 15 mm -hmm. year uh, run, right? And yeah. Drake has had a contact type of career, right? Yeah. 15 years, but also the fighter that has been saying, hey, dog, let's get it on. You have been evasive. You have been evasive for whatever reason. I don't know. Don't really give a fuck. Well, Drake's reason right? was he felt Kendrick yeah. couldn't compete with him. And well, that's what led him to focus on Pusha T. Again, and just like Jay-Z was at the height of his career with the blueprint as far as a rapper goes. The album, was, right. it's, it went uh, triple platinum, uh, uh, quintuple platinum. It, it sold yeah, like it went crazy. Five, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here come Nas, who had, quote, unquote, fallen off, right? He had You Owe Me Ice the last time they saw the nigga. He disappeared. Mm -hmm. Jay-Z, man, said, fuck out of here. And let's be real. Jay-Z had Rockefeller, too. Nas yeah. coming in. If we want to be real about the solo, because I'm a, a Jay Z fan. Yeah. yeah if we want to be real about the solo John Wick shooter, we got to get that to Nas. Nas the came right okay. in. Remember the Stillmatic yeah. he said? Yeah. The, the whole industry thing. tried to put his album back and everything. Yeah. When we talk, yeah, because that's another thing. They were black. They were playing. They was doing pay. This is during the height of the payola era. So they were right. paying people not to play Nas. If we want to talk about niggas really getting jumped. You know, and being seen as doubted in the culture, people still fuck with Drake. He, he still, all of his shit still stream. Drake ain't he? His albums ain't been flopping. He's out. He been doing no, he great. He been doing yeah, he fantastic. Does, yeah. Drake can throw a concert tomorrow. People will show up. He's not in the same situation. When we really talk about Nas. I put right. him in top ten though. Drake right. is in the top ten of uh, when the industry has trying to get rid of someone. He's in the top ten, but no. he can't he can't beat the top five, which is Fifty, Tupac, right. and we Nas about... and them. Who they they really try? Y'all think so? Oh, Fifty Cent came back from a black ball, nigga. Like he came back from a black ball wow. and attempted murder. Like, yeah, let's, they let's tried to real. kill him. Charlie, we gotta keep it gangster. Drake wow. has the yes, no. Nah, Drake has the advantage in this landscape wow. in a long time. <laughs> If you want to be real about it, what Kendrick Lamar quietly is to the public that even have some of your talking points, Kendrick mm. Lamar is a dark horse underdog in many respects. They know something's there. They know he's dangerous. But at the end of the day, look how the narrative is. They keep casually shitting on the prospect of who he is. People be calling in and say, Kendrick don't sell. Kend look, even look what uh, J Drake said. Nigga, your last shit flop. Like, he's trying to rewrite Kendrick as a tinfoil nigga that never sold anything throughout his career. That he can't sell out concerts. That he don't have his tours. Yeah, the biggest hip-hop concert, uh, concert last year. Yeah, so I'm just being real with you in a, in, in, in a, in a marketing fashion. Like, let's mm. be honest. He's a West Coaster. There's still some issues there. There's still some yeah, issues concerned. West Coast still represents a dark horse in the room because of they've lost Tupac and Biggie over there as well. I'm just being real with right. you about it, what? right? And not only that, the type of music that Kendrick Lamar makes, he not out here with YG colors on or even Nipsey Hussle colors. He makes a different right. type of traditionally hip-hop high-end music, but he's a West Coast artist. That's another factor, too, that's played into this. So when we say Drake getting jumped, not really. Drake has an unprecedented run in hip hop. What has happened now, though, right? What has happened now is that you had a situation with Metro Boomin. At the top of the stream, I said, you guys got to be careful with your engineers and producers. They all talk to each other. They all, some of the same niggas don't like the same nigga. So that's what happened right. in this regard. And let's be real. 
Drake has been very liberal about borrowing styles from people, too, because he's been accused of a lot of things. You're right about certain things, but also this is an unprecedented run for somebody like Drake. Imagine Jay-Z having a, a, a hot 10 to 15 year run with Rockefeller Records. You didn't have five oh, reference man. tracks come out, right? You had ghostwriters come out or people say I'm not being credited. People would be shooting at Jay Z's head two yeah, times over. But Solomon, Solomon, you y'all saying the reference track, but let's not act like he ain't write a lot of hits for these guys too, though. I think he did, and I just want to say this real quick. I do think the industry is trying to get rid of Drake. The only thing I disagree with you with is he has mm. not been the only one. Mm. Tupac is is a global icon. He is an icon like Prince and Michael Jackson. He yeah. died. The industry did killed get him. rid of him. They assassinated him. him. <laughs> and then 50 Cent, <laughs> who is a global icon as well, he got shot. They tried to kill him repeatedly, so much so that this is why, even though we critique Eminem, 50 Cent will never, ever, ever, ever go yeah, against Eminem, Eminem because yeah. Eminem looked out for 50 Cent. And Eminem is one of the major reasons why 50 Cent is still alive and was able to go after his enemies because of the relationship of Eminem looking out for him and giving him that deal with Interscope. Yeah, Another right. one is Nas. Now, Nas, they weren't trying to physically kill him with that one. But with Nas... The whole industry turned against him, and they was trying to destroy this man's uh, uh, legacy. Because remember, Nas was the one who transformed hip hop into an art that nobody never seen before. When he came out with with uh, Illmatic, don't uh, get me wrong, Rock yeah. and L O Cool J and Run D N C did the damn thing. But when when Nas came out with Illmatic. It was it solidified hip hop as an art form that yeah, can that can compete uh, with rock and roll and it's, jazz it's and hip hop's one of his most uh, influential albums. Right, and then so I would say with with Drake, I would say when when you name these people, I think he's at probably number five. Yeah, because yeah. he did. You're right, and we talked about this number in 2018. Five? Okay, no number five in like the industry trying to go against him. I would put him maybe like okay. number five or number six on the list where. Uh, you do have the industry trying to get uh, a rid of of Drake, but the first people, the first uh, time around, it was Meek. Meek was having a battery put behind his back from yeah, Ray but you Ross, know, we know he's stupid. Jay Z yeah. and, and 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 all them niggas. Then the second time, Kanye, Pusha T, Pharrell, and all them tried to get rid of of Drake, and then this time, you know, it's more people in his peer class. But I would just say leave Kendrick out of it because Kendrick. He don't care about none of that. He, that's not Kendrick why he has an issue with Drake. Kendrick is just a consequence of not t not taking the the five foot four giant seriously. You know. Yeah, he should have. He should have. But he could get him now though. But yeah, he, he so, has an opportunity. This so, this so, would be a great rebrand for Drake as far as an um, an MC because we saw unfortunately uh, what took place with, with the Pusha T situation. Go ahead. Yeah, nah, but I'm I'm saying though. So you think he's gonna? So I know uh, what Sin said. So do you think he's gonna get out of this and win? I think Drake has an opportunity, um, honestly. I think, though, you know what it reminds me of? Is, again, this is why I likened it to boxing player. Kendrick Lamar is secluded right now. Those are the worst type of fighters to engage with. He's not That's on the true. internet. You know, uh, if you know the film uh, Rocky Balboa, uh, the Rocky series, uh, Rocky Three when he was going against Clubber Lane. That's probably my second favorite Rocky film behind um, the first film, right? You know, I know yeah. people say Sylvester Stallone is racist. I don't know that Italian. You know, I know Rocky, the show. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about hanging with stars. Yeah, I don't really okay. get to know yeah. you. You call me a nigga, I'm going to knock the block off your face. I don't give a fuck who you are. But listen, yeah. um, this is what I said that's beautiful about that movie. Uh the Italian Stallion had it hard, as we've seen for the first two films. Him going against the late, great Carl Reathers as, as one of the more memorable characters on the screen, Apollo Creed, right? But mm. by the time he got to three, the third installment of the film, Rocky was successful. You know, he, he came up. People right. loved the underdog story. They felt he had good hair, you know, even though he looked like a foot in the face. They, they, <laughs> they held, felt he had good hair. Uh, he got the cars. Okay. He was on Time Magazine. He was at show ads for Lamborghini. And here you had Clubber Lane. Clubber Lane said, I want to fight you, Rocky. 
You know, Clever Lane, he even interrupted their statue unveiling in Philadelphia. You know? Right. He said, this country want to hold me down because I ain't no puppet like that fool up there. That right there is Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar right. for 10 years been saying, fight me, fight me. Kendrick Lamar has said the same thing for, actually out of all of his said enemies, Kendrick Lamar has been the most consistent. And I think Drake if has to would, look at it that, that he has been the purest. He didn't get into the Wyoming thing. He wasn't a raw with Meek Mill. He has to look at uh, Kendrick as a different opponent than the guys who are just jealous of him. So this is my thing. So when you ask the question, I say that Kendrick Lamar is his most dangerous opponent. I feel like absolutely. This. I actually feel that's why I'm in the job. <laughs> my honest opinion. I know people may not like it, I, and I, I love yeah. the clips. But I felt if it was really a legitimate battle, I felt Drake would have smoked Pusha T. Yeah, when we said I, that, I, I in, said, and we said too. that in 2018, we just yeah. said like Drake. Drake need to. You know, he, he Drake. My problem with Drake is, it seems like he listens to people who only want a validation from him, like yes men. Like he yeah. hasn't listened to like even with us we was non uh non biased because I love the uh, Pusha T's music but you know Pusha T isn't as big as Drake and I love Drake music and uh, right. you know Drake says shit that he doesn't listen to even when he was like I got enemies got a lot of enemies you know yeah. he well, then he went to Wyoming to write for right. Kanye who was jealous of it yeah. and Kanye stands don't come after us I love Ye music and all that and I know. Ye is the father yeah. musically of Ye Drake, cool. but he was still well. jealous of Drake nonetheless. And Drake went over there and wrote for them, and then they embarrassed him. But then again, Drake got to start listening to people outside of just his camp and just outside of Yes Man. Because if you would have listened to people who were just saying it like, like it is, even if they're not feeding your ego, you would have been prepared to go up against this this type of shit because that's where the... I would give it to Nas. I can't, you know, Pac got killed, uh, but I would give it to Nas and yeah. 50. Mm -hmm. Nas and 50 listen to everybody. How do you think Nas and 50 survived this shit? And mm -hmm. Drake got to have the same type of Teflon mindset. Otherwise, well, he's going to fail. This, just to put this out there. So the reason why I say it, because I see people in the chat, they're disagreeing. But look, no, Drake, I'm going to tell you something. When that nigga said... Uh, I bring calicos to the Alamo. I already knew what time it was. I said, "Oh shit, it's jumping yeah. to the time." This nigga ready. This nigga ready to smoke a legend, right? Yeah. And let's be real, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you had Kanye West, and we told you all from from what people say. You had people like legend, like legendary craftsmen, lyricists like Sahai the Prince and Nas, and people that were kind of there on the Wyoming situation. You know, is a lot of folks that were like real lyricists that were there, you know, being encouraging and in the whole sh the push a T thing. If it really wasn't, and, and think about also what was weaponized in the process. Jay Prince, uh, the Larry Hoover situation, that slowed the, the battle down. Now, right. the reason why I'm saying this about Kendrick Lamar, I'm not saying that uh, Drake's ass is going to get 100% washed by Kendrick Lamar. Uh, I think Drake is going to have to really focus. This is his most dangerous opponent because Kendrick has been his most consistent opponent. The reason why all the other guys were weak because they've been inconsistent with Drake. Secondly, yeah. the reason why Drake has to be careful, he has placements where he brings the best out of his opponents. He brought the best yeah. out of Rick Ross. We have not heard that from Rick Ross in a long time. We yeah, have, I heard he's that. Brought the like, best. Think, let's let's keep it real. Because you got to listen. When niggas, you guys got to start dancing with your opponents, you also got to not only focus on what they're doing to you, but what you bring out of them. So look at right. Future. This nigga brought the, Drake's existence brought the best out of Metro, Boomin, and Future that we have heard in a long ass time. These niggas gave you a three disc banger. So, if that has been the case for Lazy Rick Ross or Metro Boomin or even Future when he came out of his coma of strippers and he gave y'all We Don't Trust You, which everybody feels like, damn, that's his best work since Dirty Sprite 2. The reason why this little mm -hmm. nigga is different, then what happens when you bring the best out of a nigga that has been performing the one of the best at his top tier lyricism as it stands? That's why I'm saying I would fuck the Twitch niggas. Fuck the dancing TikTok niggas. Nigga, get yeah, your ass and go yeah, seclude man. yourself because I'm going to tell you Young something. Y'all niggas not going to be able to save you. This nigga, this nigga here, 
just like what Drake does, what I will say what Drake does, like most people that are seen at the top of the game, they bring the best out of everyone else that has a hint of hunger in them somewhere. Michael Jordan was bringing the best out of niggas in the league at the time. LeBron James was bringing the best out of niggas at the time. So this whole thing is that that's a part of the game. Nigga, if you sitting up there and you holding the number one position and niggas are hungry, niggas got talent, expect for some of these niggas to show up with their game. I do feel yeah. a lot of the people that are part of the OVO wave, and even I heard it before with Drake, right? They are very dismissive of opponents. How are you dismissive? Y'all, they've been dismissive of Kendrick Lamar for the longest. Hip-hop fans know different. They think differently. Hip-hop fans say, hey, man, I think y'all should go ahead and get it on. But he and his team and his people, they've always been dismissive. Now you have an issue here where you have to ask me the question, do you think he can beat him? Right, and that's why. Right, if you think about that. Because before that wasn't the question before with people when he was talking about Drake and Kendrick. Nah. They were saying, they were saying <laughs> that it was a wash. It was a wash. And, you know, Drake ain't, Kendrick ain't fucking with Drake. But now you at this point in time that you bring out the best. Drake does have a code where he brings out the best of his challenges. But just also, to put that out I, there. I got to say, Drake also got, he, that's why he can't whine. I don't want to hear you yeah. getting drunk because you in a good position. Just make sure you're not in a position, of course, like, you know, Tupac, you don't want to get killed. But right. you're in a great position. You're with Tupac, 50 Cent, Nas, you with Jay-Z, and you with Ye. These are other people who have to face the industry turning their back on them or trying to get rid of them. At some point, getting so sick at, of them. At, or at some, yeah. So you're in great company in hip-hop. The only problem is, again, like, he has to be able, because he got a Gemini and Chiron, he has to be able to not think everybody's taking digs at him by being honest of what's going on uh, in this hip-hop game when it comes to the commentators. And it is what it is. He's going to have to put on his gloves. He's going to have to go out there, and he's going to have to conquer. Just like Kendrick, he's been able to to be calm, even though he's always been dismissed in, in his career. When he came on The Breakfast Club, there was like a dark-skinned nigga who's five-something with elf ears. Nigga, nobody would have ever looked at you as you as a star. And this nigga, uh, Kendrick, is a superstar. So he has he no is. underdog story. This is why it makes Drake and Kendrick is the premier fight to see. And this is the fight that everybody wants to see as well. But go ahead, Colin. Nah, tell Kendrick to drop, man. We, uh, the, I want him to drop. It's time. We've been waiting for this for the longest. He need to drop. Drake, put the track out there. He's telling him, come on. He done dissed them, all this, right? Everybody was saying he didn't want to smoke with, he didn't want to smoke with Kendrick and all this. And then to y'all, to y'all point, right? When Kendrick dropped the control verse, right? The reason why I didn't go nowhere is because remember Drake did an interview and they asked him, I think it was Andrew Martinez. And he was like, yeah, uh, when I ran into Kendrick, you know, he, he said he was just playing. It wasn't really real. So he's like, yo, if it's not real, then what am I going back and forth with you he for? You know what I mean? Competition. It, I think Drake did. Huh? did to your point, Drake Drake has a problem with this. Kendrick was telling him, it's just competition, man. Come back at me. Remember when 50 Cent, when he said he dissed uh, Chameleon Air? And Chameleon Air was like, bro, I thought we were yeah. cool. He's like, bro, we are cool. I want you to get some shit going. Let's let's have a friendly battle. Because uh, 50 Cent did that with Ye. He had a friendly battle with Ye. It wasn't no, nothing uh, major. It was to get both of their selves up. And it was perfectly fine. I think that. Drake didn't comprehend, comprehend that that's what Kendrick was talking about at the time. He like, let's like have some had, fun. Let's, he, he let's go like back and had, forth. He felt it had to be uh, personal. Yeah, but y'all yeah, know. No, but Drake, Drake let's yeah. be real. Drake, how he operates, it has to be personal for him. And I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. I've, I've actually seen Drake move his ass behind women more than anything else. Like when, when Nicki Minaj was over there with Meek, we saw a motivated Drake. And he even played up into that about is that your world tour or your girl tour? You know, when right. when it was common and Serena Williams, Drake moved his ass on that one. You know, I, I actually think Drake needs a hell of in hell of Troy scenario a lot of times in battles for him for him to sink his teeth into the battle itself. You know, if that's not there, which is what you're going to get with Kendrick Lamar, you can't say um, the public knows that y'all have had sex with the same woman. You can't say, I invited your wife out to my tour. You're really going to have to box this nigga. You, you, you can't, it's no more slick, underhanded shit. And another thing about it too, the culture that 
KDOT comes from, the West Coast is largely a, a, a restrictive culture. Like, L.A. loves uh, Kendrick Lamar, you know. Are they fans yeah, of sure. Drake? Absolutely. But, you know, at the same time, though, Kendrick Lamar comes from the city. Think about what they told LeBron James. They told LeBron James, man, we love you, dog, but you're not Kobe being Bryant, though. You know, you're LeBron James. Like, we, we fuck with you, but Kobe is the one that, you know, they, they look at Kobe differently uh, than they do LeBron James, and whereas how? the world looks at LeBron James differently how they look at Kobe, and that's what I would liken to what goes on with Drake at times. You got to get your home base you know? because LeBron yeah. had to go back to Cleveland to be like, and, and, and Prince White, he had, like, LeBron, he was hurt, heartbroken when people in Cleveland was like, fuck, fuck him. But when he came back and won that championship, they said he can leave. He shut that. He yeah. shut that shit all he down. And it's yeah, he did. Yeah, he gave him a chip, and they didn't burn his jerseys when he left the second time because he, he felt, <laughs> yeah, they felt like he did right by the city, you know. But nigga, you gonna leave before you give them a ring? He's like, no, you, you smashed. Don't. <laughs> yeah, you smashed. And you didn't give her a ring, so that's what happened there. But to to your question, play, I'm gonna be honest with you all. Uh, I think Drake and the people around Drake. I think he's more than capable of. If he's going to come with that energy that I see, what I what I feel the High Whitney track is really him, okay? Mm. If he's coming with that energy, that's very strong energy right there. Got to be now, confident. Come confident. right out with it. But also, because your opponent is a high-ranking MC himself, be prepared to bring the best out of this nigga, too. So I also, at the end of the day, let me tell you what's going to happen. When... Kendrick drops his verse or whatever he about to, I mean, drops his song. Yeah, yeah drop it. Let's go. When he drops his song, that's going to clear all of the bullshit out of the room. All the Telemundo. All of the, it is. the Rick Ross shit. Because then read, now, um, now we're locked into an engagement. Yeah, know? and remember, just to say this too, call it in, I'll, I'll let you have the last word before we move on to the, the next caller, mm. is remember, Drake has to remember Kendrick is big as him. Like when he said that part where like none of y'all are big as Japan in Japan y'all just y'all just known in the United States. Kendrick can for go some of those people, That's he true. talking shit about is true, but not Kendrick. Kendrick is big in Japan. He's big around the world, just like Drake is. He just went a different route with it. It's kind of like when people try to be like, Bob Marley is huge. He's global. Did he go about it the yeah. same route as Michael Jackson? No. Did Whitney Houston make the same type of music Michael Jackson did to be global? No. And I think sometimes in contemporary times, we forget that people can be just as big by going their own way. And this is what people love about Drake and Kendrick is that Kendrick had stayed true to himself. He didn't have to try to get the, the Drake stimulus package with Damn, which is his biggest uh, album. And he's just as big as Drake in a different way by taking a different route, which is why he needs to show Kendrick respect and really get into this battle. Now, I get if he don't respect some of the other guys because it's like, y'all took the money, y'all was all on my dig. Yeah, no, y'all yeah. was, you know, this and that. I wrote and, some of y'all hooks. Right, you yeah, know. You know, so, like, I, 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 I get yeah. that. But I'm just saying when Drake and Gate, when Kendrick Lamar drops his song, it will become officially that these two boxers – locked in all of the hoes on the side all of the groupie niggas that roll blunts and weed that don't concern yeah. me that's what's going to be so uh i'll be honest with you it, it's up in the air if kendrick lamar comes out with bars and he's getting straight to the point and he's not being too abstract in his rhyme scheme uh it's going to be a it's going to be a, a a tough challenge for uh drake uh, also i i even know even when you look at sometimes with academics you know, even when academics question certain things, that's how you know how Drake has to do a 100% knockout. And look, it's a, he's at a 15-year run. I mean, people have been able to try him uh, over and over and over and over because of what he represents. Remember, he was seen as yeah. a uh, 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 he was seen as a forearm uh, Goro type nigga. He could sing, he could yeah. rap, he can write, he can compose the the hooks for people behind the scenes. He was doing a lot of shit. So. Uh, Drake has been a multi-billion dollar industry for a lot of people, a lot of companies. Uh, as on the other end, Kendrick Lamar represents the other energy that is just as large as well. Why do you think so, they both yeah. calling each other Michael and Prince? Yeah, I mean, so, they both of their energies are big. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think Drake has an opportunity. Uh, I don't think, I think he can keep on grazing past the likes of um, 
Rick Ross because Rick Ross is doing some other things. Uh, He's doing Ross. It yeah. is funny. Yeah, it's funny. He, he don't got nothing to do. He's been waiting. He needs something to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, but I, I would actually keep my eye on uh, possibly J. Cole and we'll see. Uh, no, I'm just telling this, just to be real. I'm not saying... J. Cole may betray you. Yeah, I'm disgusted with you because let's, let's he be may. real. We don't know. He may. If the nigga said, I want... P he didn't say, Drake, you can hit me on the chin. He said respectfully with Kendrick Lamar uh, because of other things that they had. Uh, they were going to have more of a, a, a quote-unquote artistically intimate relationship versus just doing singles together. They really were trying to do an album together, but all of the records shared, the labels got in the way of that. You get what I'm saying? But um, no, I don't. I think Drake. I think Drake is doing what he's supposed to do. You know, he he's supposed to shoot back. Uh, what he represents, how he had been able to casually keep crossing over freely. Uh, this many niggas was going to come after him. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's like, I mean, is it really niggas? Like when you say somebody's jumping someone, where I'm from, that means it you, is. You, that Solomon, means, come on. Oh, man, let me just tell you, where I'm from, if dog, if you get jumped, that means you losing. Like niggas ran up on Bruce Lee, but the nigga didn't get jumped because he whooped everybody's ass. It just nah, like jumping is nigga, a jump for Solomon. Come on. No, because no, they no. smell blood. This is what we warned Drake about in 2018. We said that if so, one of one of Drake's biggest issue is he should have. I get it. You know, Jay Prince is your old G and all that other shit. We yeah, he said, said, killed Pusher. We uh, said, uh, kill uh, Pusher uh, musically. <laughs> we said that. Because of the Pusher T. Yeah. If, I was an, if I was an opponent, I'm coming and I the saw nigga. there's a nigga who could tell you what to do, I'm coming out there, and I said, I never liked that funky nigga anyway. And I bet, you know, he may stand down and get if somebody else come in. So that's why they're confident. That's what we say in, that's what we say in this play. I'm going to be real with you. Two mistakes in Drake's career. Getting them face tats. No, I'm joking. Listen, no, two mistakes in Drake's <laughs> career is dismissing Kendrick Lamar. Control was a big thing in hip hop. That verse was it huge. Was. This was the new class of niggas. Yeah, we became the that. forefront of the culture. So it was big to us. Fuck the guys before us. They already did their things. The Beanie Seagulls, Jada Kids, the Tupacs. They, yeah. they had their multi-billion dollar moment. For us, that was a big thing. Drake says, eh, I don't care. He does color purple music. I said, all right, Drake, nigga. I mean, all right, if we, if we moving on past that, we really going to be hove and ignore this shit, then ignore it. But don't keep coming back subbing this nigga. Secondly, he should have never, he should have never allowed Pusha T to have his miscongeniality victory lap and he should have never wanted yeah, to be a you, part of the club with the old heads as nasty as, yeah. yeah man yeah. as nasty brother is nasty story of Adi Don people can say it's a gossip track they can say whatever they want it is a nasty track it was a psychological yeah. warfare track Duppy was more yeah. lyrical but uh Put, but the story of Adidon was more psychological. He actually talked about things that does mess with Drake. Drake, Drake didn't want to get that that Russian prostitute. Yeah, your hair don't nap enough. Yeah, yeah that's tough. He, like he he that really touched. He went and, and took Drake's soul, and Drake got mad. But what really destroyed Drake though was being sat down by Jay Prince. That that I mean, after yeah, that he man. been acting weird. That nigga. Jay Prince, like we were waiting on hip hop. This nigga came out with a Reading Rainbow tour. It was funny though. Uh, yeah, and, I, book, and I still don't understand him walking in front of that bullet either. Like, yeah, I said, because I believe you could do both. You could Drake, kiss babies and slap. No, nah, you know? Drake, shut the fuck up, Drake, and everybody <laughs> buy my book called Prosperity, right? And we say, like, what the uh, fuck is going on? Sorry, French, French, French hoe, baby mother. Yeah. Right. And, and so, you know, when I'm, I'm telling you, you know, for folks, because we had people call and say, no, nah, Drake good. He fine. I said, no, he's not. I says, you got to yeah, understand. I, he got to take this serious. I was talking to somebody that was working close with Drake at one time, right before Back to Back oh. dropped. And mm -hmm. when Back to Back dropped, that nigga called uh, and he said, uh, to us, he said, "Bruh, so many niggas in the industry are scared of this nigga Drake. Not that he's a gangster; it's what he did to someone like Meek Mill. They already knew he was a hit maker. They already knew he could right. sing. They knew he had bars, but they didn't know he can embarrass 
a street nigga like that. It was the first time a suburban yeah. a suburban yeah. person embarrassed a hood nigga, and that was why Drake was so important to the culture. This is why the sexy red shit and all that. Ugh, this is uh, but at that yeah. time he was yeah. dangerous because he's like, wow, a suburban dude who straight lace can make this at the time this street yeah. nigga yeah. look like a cornball. Go ahead, caller. What'd you say? No, go, go ahead. You was about to say something. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying, like, you know, I'm a Drake fan, but when, when that whole Meek Mill thing happened, I said, nah, Drake dead. And I, you know, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that Meek you Mill know why? You went out like that. Look, let me tell you what Drake did. Drake gave us the moment Eminem did it. I agree. <laughs> yeah, Eminem Ooh, has never given us saying? this moment. Eminem, punch oh, him down. Like, we, we, nigga, we know you can, like, rap, but, like, you know, you gonna you gonna go after Nas, Jay Z? Like, are you gonna get, go? Are you gonna go after a heavyweight? He was like, Nah, yeah. I'm gonna go after Benzino and Christina Milian and all his other shit. And Ja Rule don't yeah. count because that was Fifty Cent's problem. You get what I'm saying? That don't count, yeah. right? But when Drake did what he did with Meek Mill, this is why I'm saying people. I know people think a certain way of Drake now. You don't understand if you wasn't there in 2015, 2016. Yeah. Drake, was looked at as the most dangerous nigga in rap music. No, nobody felt yeah. like, dog, like, man, we just seen, like, we just gassed this nigga. Remember Meek Mill before we looked at him now as a, a, a hooker, right? A hooker for Diddy. Right? <laughs> before, remember, yeah. Meek Mill gave you guys an incredible mixtape run with the Dream Chasers. He gave you a yeah. wonderful album, Dreams Worth More Than Money. I was banging that shit. I was, I was, that shit was knocking yeah. me, right? And yeah. then um, he still was able to give you wins and losses. I feel those are his two strongest projects. But when he gave you dreams yeah. worth more than money, he was a part of the uh, the Creed soundtrack with Michael B. Jordan and mm -hmm. Ryan Coogler. Like, yeah. everything looked perfect for Meek. So when he yeah, was going was after the Drake, yeah. it looked like an yeah. easy wash because the history of Philadelphia, you had Cassidy, Reed Dollars, you got all of these Cicero, right. Cicero you got all of these niggas that were lyrical assassins and snipers. So we just assume that's what Meek was about to do to Drake. And somehow yeah. a reverse wrist lock happened in front of everybody and people's mouths was shocked. They says, what just happened? And then from that yeah, point on, nobody really wanted to go at Drake directly. So when Pusher steps into the ring, you know, people's like, oh, man, we know Drizzy about to do and something. he came out with Duppy and was like, oh, oh he going to yeah. smoke on the old nigga. Which, I, which I, thought, I thought Drake won that, though. But like y'all said, the shock value with Pusher. Well, just... I I think because if Drake's track was better, it was better. Like he had yeah, bars, he had. Yeah, but you know. when you let the problem with Drake is he don't do well with trolls. This is why Rick Ross is coming from the troll angle with the BB BBL Drizzy and White Boy, and it did get under his skin because we saw him do the joke back with the the text message. He gotta be careful because Drake, Drake when it comes to trolls, it's very hard for him to deal with them. Like yay, one of the reasons why he lost against yay and and um. Pusher, these are two trolls. So when Ye came on the track that he uh, Drake wanted to buy from, um, yeah, Ye went and did fart sounds on it. And and LeBron, who's from the United States, had to tell Drake, you get in troll. Because Drake was like, what, like, is he trying to, like, troll me or something? Yeah, man. And then LeBron and them started laughing like, <laughs> yeah, they trolling you, nigga. So Drake got to understand. I'm a nigga? <laughs> he got <laughs> <laughs> Like, I mean, what are we talking about? Pusha T was a troll, and he trolled Drake to an L. Because when, when, uh, what is great about Pusha T psychologically, he's like, look, I'm not going to go bar to bar because you the hot nigga right now. I'm going to do tea time, and I'm going to especially design a poison that will harm you. And if and because Drake never responded, you know, Pusha T wins by default. Bro, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, you don't that, That's all it is. Listen, I, and the reason why Kendrick is is dangerous, the nigga has shown that he's has he has dark humor. You know, uh, yeah. we see. Look, he he's an actor just like Drake is, right? So these are both yeah. thespian niggas, right? You know, they just do it different ways. That, that's why I said I think you know Kendrick Lamar is Drake's cleanest direct contact opponent. None of the gossip shit in between, I, and that's why I do feel. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people that are really riding for Drake, I do feel they kind of feel kind of funny about Kendrick. 
I, I feel they I do. Feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they yeah. feel funny about Kendrick. Yeah. They don't feel the same way about Kendrick like they feel about Ross or Future or or. That's or, what I'm saying. He needs to drop. Like, let's get let's get to it. Like, well, he got a week the, to the... drop because we, uh, uh, Drake took a week. How you got a week? week and a half, because Drake took a week or a week and a half to respond. So that means all that right. from like that. So that means uh, Kendrick got about like a week, a week and a half to respond as well. The, Go ahead. Because the thing is, I don't want to waste time. Like, all right, cool. The Ross track, we loved it. It was funny. I like it. But, like, I want to get to the to the real fight. Like, let's get to the real fight. I know. And I think you know? Kendrick, one thing that Kendrick is doing right now, if people pay attention, he's acting like the Joker uh, um, Jokic in uh, basketball or what we've seen uh, with LeBron James or uh, some more notable players like Magic Johnson. If you pay attention, Kendrick Lamar is quietly controlling the pace of the game. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to slow this bitch down how I feel like it. You know? And I respect Drake even getting back in the ring after having that empty Josh in a w- moment uh, in the Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Right? I, I, I yeah. actually, mm-hmm. I, that's why I think, I, I feel Drake is more uh, akin to Anthony Joshua uh, that, you know, he was supposed to have this great introduction to America and mm-hmm. Jarrell Miller fucked it up because they found out he was on steroids and then uh, they had to do a switch and they brought in Andy Ruiz, Butterbean, right? And Andy mm-hmm. Ruiz got them, 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 them gunshot hands, right? And Anthony Joshua was training for Jarrell Miller to have his debut in America, which was supposed to be an easy win for him overtly. But what happened was... He everything got switched up at the last minute, uh, and then he got in there with Anthony Ruiz, and he was carrying too much load too. Because if you notice, when uh, Anthony Joshua got back in the ring with Andy, he had to lose weight. So when he loses yeah. weight, he can move around because Andy's style is very fast. Got one of the fastest hands you could have seen, right? So. Uh, he had yeah. an unfortunate bad debut in America. That was the first time Anthony Joshua had a public viewing in America, and he got his ass beat several times. He kept getting knocked down and knocked down, and so it took him a minute to get his grind right, and he steps back in the wing, and you saw what he did uh, recently. I feel like that's Drake right now. He got back in mm-hmm. the ring, and he's putting on a very solid performance And to I don't the want no more leaks from Drake. The only leak I've ever wanted was him to drop that diss record he has towards Pusha T. I yeah. know everybody disagree with us on that. Yeah, he had to leak that. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, leak yeah. that shit, my nigga. Like, what the yeah, fuck you still holding on to it for? Like, leak the shit, go and compete with Kendrick, and you're going to have to wrap up the thing with Pusha T because, man, if you don't leak that diss record, man, it's... it's you know, That's you're, you're, you're not gonna. At. It's gonna make it look like like people could respond to Dark Crimes be like, man, that nigga didn't have no no mean girl shab to my old man. Uh, Drake's just a punk ass bitch. Drop the fucking diss record. Leak that shit. Leak well, that shit. Well, yeah, I think I actually that's why I feel the High Whitney track. I feel it's legit because it sound like he was going into Drakeavelli mode and he mm-hmm. wanted to address some old shit and he should and he should. Yeah. You know, so I well, think he said the, he was trying to keep PG so. You said you, you said he was trying to get what now? Nah, at the end of the track, he said I was. I'm trying to keep it PG. So let's see, you know, the next one. Just yeah, with PG, drop the bomb. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think Drake has all the opportunity that's presented in front of him if he takes advantage of it and takes Kendrick Lamar very serious and he has to understand what his particular code. He genuinely brings out the best in his opponents, and that's what opponents are supposed to do. I, I mean, there shouldn't be no ego oh. there. Is that if you the best, right? And and if you want to stay the best. You have to look at everybody stepping to you as an opportunity that they may get one in on you because they feel you're the best. They feel you're a threat, right? And I think so. He wins. He the best in y'all eyes too. Who? No, I'm saying by the industry standard. I think two. No, I don't know. I'm asking y'all though. No, I wait, think. Wait, Drake, wait, what's his question? You asking us is Drake? Are you asking us is Drake? No, I'm saying if he, if he, if he's victorious after all this, he beat Kendrick. Whatever, he ride off into the sunset. To y'all, like in y'all minds. Is if he, number he one? defeats Kendrick in a, if he defeats Kendrick in a an embarrassing manner, remember the type of artist that Kendrick is, the 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 range of margin of error would have to be minimal. It would have to, he would have to it would have to be an ether moment. I'm being honest with you all because if that's not the case, the public will always be like, eh, I don't know. You want to see is clean. If he does that to Kendrick Lamar, 
You got to mm. put it on his head. You have to put that on his yeah, head. That yeah. it, oh, okay. He That's is all I wanted to hear. Okay. For the for the 2010s, yeah. if he beats uh, Kendrick, he's the he's gonna be. That's it. That's the nigga. That's the okay. that's the guy. I mean, you could always say, okay. okay, you can still have your artistic taste of who's better, but that will make Drake the, yeah. the king of the 2010s when it comes to hip hop, and that bumps him up. That may bump him. Well, that should bump him up above Kendrick when they do the top 10 list and all that other stuff. For the 20s. You know, just 2010s. like okay. if if Kendrick wins, then Kendrick's that nigga. He's the nigga. And and him being up there okay. on the list, he's gonna it's gonna be perfect. The only point we're saying I don't want to hear no excuses from Kendrick or Drake camp. Okay, we already gave mm. uh, Drake enough leeway with the push it thing. T thing he like he really pissed me the fuck off with that fucking yeah, J Prince nah, ex- excuse and all that shit. Pusha T has yeah. to win because you stood down and leaked the fucking diss record. But as for the Kendrick thing, if he beats Kendrick, he's he's number one. That's just it. Yeah, it is. Okay. It, it's it's, it's uh, we're, we're talking about number one, not in pop shit. I know, like I said, OVO fans. I know they like to go like, well, you know, this that. We're not talking about that nigga. Because I honestly don't want to hear Kiki's delivery service. All right, I don't care about that trip. Yeah, right. Cool. But if you're talking about in hip hop, which runs everything else concerning this stuff, yes, if Drake defeats Kendrick Lamar on the track and they go back and forth a couple times and Drake keeps smoking him, he's the nigga. You can't that that again. That's what I love about sports. You can't lie. You can't lie. And say yeah. Angel Reese is garbage. You can't do that. I, that's why I love sports. You got a championship, you know, right? But again, the flip can be said too. If Kendrick comes out here and he humbles the Canadian giant, then even the OVO fans they would just have to celebrate the pop side of uh, Drake. Now I don't know what that does with his legacy behind having to lose to Pusher and then having an embarrassing moment with Kendrick Lamar. That will be challenging mm. for Drake with the duration of his and, career. And I personally think if if Drake loses against Kendrick, you could you can uh, put that pop shit in the coffin too. You know. You know because. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. my thing is like with with Drake, you got this is and with Kendrick, this is an all out hip hop victory battle because hip hop has actually been the underbelly for pop for a very long time. For thirty you plus think, years. You think pop stars gonna want to work with uh, Drake when he's not the cool guy anymore? No, they're gonna go to want to work yeah. with Kendrick. Although pop yeah. stars have been wanting to work with Kendrick and Drake, but you know, if Drake if Drake is knocked out by his own pair, not by somebody like Pusha T, who is is irrelevant right now. His only big thing was he's in the history yeah, book with the clips and for destroying Drake, right? But he ain't nobody yeah. in hip hop really mentioning him. Kendrick is the only one who, if he defeats Drake, he's gonna be still be talked about, unlike Pusha T. So. Uh, whoever wins this battle is just going to be the king of the of the uh, 2010s. They're going to okay. have uh, bragging rights, and they're going to be able to do the damn thing. They're going to have their victory lap. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, and the level, and, you know, a part of the victory lap, because it's not about convincing the OVO fans or the TDE, K-Dot, PG Lang fans. Actually, the audience you're supposed to uh, convince is the neutral audience. That's the yes. audience you need to convince because them the ones that are going to laugh. You know how many people, everybody that was celebrating and laughing at Rick Ross's track, they don't even really fuck with his music all that heavy like that. Right. If that was the case, he would have right. been selling more right now. But what they yeah. found in that moment was something funny. Case in point, Remy Ma. Remy Ma has been going double wood for most of her career, right? When yeah. she dropped she Sheetha, was funny. Yeah, when she <laughs> dropped Sheetha, that neutral audience that don't fuck with her music, they knew what that was, and then they laughed about it and became a celebration right. lap for her. Because Stan's going to love you wins or losses. Damn. Like, if Drake get knocked out, people on the OVO be like, champ, you gave her the best sh- a shot. And some are going to try to make excuses. If Kendra get knocked out, someone be like, champ, you did it the best you could. We still love you. Uh, and they'll make excuses for Kendrick. But the neutral audience determines who wins because we don't give a fuck about none of that. Yeah. We're going to call Ooh. it how we see it, and we're going to give the crown to who deserves it. Yeah. You know, that's just that that's simple. It. That's all it's going to be at the end of the day. And also, the only thing I've seen as an indicator, uh, which he is a part of Kendrick's team in camp, uh, Schoolboy Q, who I think has a very excellent discography. But Schoolboy Q... Uh, oh, yesterday yeah. tweeted, he said, man, this shit is going to be funny. That's what he said from whatever they heard. And okay. then Daylight said, uh, oh, God, and he said, pray for Canada. That's all he said. So whatever the hell is being cooked right. up right now, <laughs> I, look, we're here for it. You get what I'm saying? At the uh, end yeah, of the day. drop it. 
you know. Yeah. Yeah, but right, no, well, if, if, if Drake wins, because I do, because look, the, the sassiest people that be, you know, getting at us would really just be a lot of the, the hardcore OVO fans and some of their inside yeah. the camp folks that be in the chat with burner accounts. Uh, yeah. Look, if Drake wins and he defeats Kendrick in a in a unanimous uh, uh, sequence of events, and he really gets to burn, and if he's turning up from this, and I think with the High Whitney track, that would be his back to back for him. That's what he's looking to run the same gameplay that he was going to do on Pusha T. Because I felt like mm-hmm. uh, Duppy was a charged up track. I was like, ah, it's decent. You know, it's a little bit better yeah. than charged up. But I, way, Duppy was way yeah. better than charged up. But I feel that the real track hadn't been released yet that he was working on. And so I think that's what he's looking to run the game with Kendrick. And Drake, his fighting style is this he's a pressure cooker, he likes to apply pressure. So he'll throw out the bait one. And then he'll level up with the heavy one and let it sit out there. And now you have to go in your bag and work. The beautiful part about Kendrick Lamar, actually, if he's not operating under pressure, you don't get anything out of Kendrick Lamar. The reason why people, I personally feel like when he was like, well, you know, him going back and forth with Big Sean, I don't think Kendrick Lamar is that interested in Big Sean like that. I think he was kind of annoyed by yeah, Big Sean because yeah, Big Sean was yeah. more inconsistent. He kept saying, we're brothers. There's nothing wrong here, boy. We're good. And then, you know, when he finally got to Element and then the Heart Part 5, you saw him get a little bit more energetic with Big Sean because he's getting annoyed with him now because Big Sean had been the most flip-floppy. You know, Drake has been the most consistent in the sense of you could tell he was hurt by it, emotional and irritated, but he didn't say nothing. Big Sean kept saying, we're friends, we're not friends, I don't know what's going on, and you've seen Kendrick get annoyed. So I think in this situation, I do believe like um, Kendrick Lamar being under pressure, that's right up his alley. Right, and we have a 10 uh, a.m. show on our Patreon, so everybody get ready. We're about to head over there. And the last thing I say is like, over your fan base, y'all can't treat Kendrick like he any other other uh, uh, food, st- food stamp niggas that was working with Drake. Uh, Kendrick made his own way. He didn't need a Drake stimulus package. He's been having, damn, his most successful album has nothing to do with Drake. And also, people with, in, in the uh, Kendrick camp, stop acting like Drake is a scub. A, a, a scub. A scrub. A <laughs> scub. <laughs> talking all day. A scrub. If he was a scrub, Kendrick would have never mentioned him in control. And Kendrick wouldn't be out here trying to take his head off. So y'all can't have it both ways and say Drake is a bitch and he nothing. But Kendrick out here ready to try to uh, decapitate that head to be, to wear the crown as the king of hip-hop for the uh, 2010. So y'all can't get like stop being hypocrites right there. But go, call the last call. Uh, uh, thing, uh, do you want to say? Last words, all I want to say? Yeah. Yeah, all I want to say is I think Drake going to win. I think he becomes mm-hmm. victorious. Okay. And, uh... I don't want to hear nothing more from J. Cole. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, I can respect that. You I know. respect that. All right, man. We appreciate it. Great call. Man, All right, I appreciate y'all, man. All yeah, right. I'm going to definitely be watching. All right. Hey, there you go. All right. Link in here right now for yeah, you. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get going. Listen, folks, look, uh, as the final things to take away from this stream, uh, we believe that they, as Stacia said early on, they are soft launching some of the tracks concerning Drake or Graham to see what the energy will be like. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I do believe the High Whitney track, along with Sincere Ignorance as well, I believe there's some, I think there's some credence there. I think there's some real smoke there. Uh, again, the last time before they released, uh, before they officiated the, uh, the push-up track, you know, industry niggas online and industry podcasters, industry podcasters were saying that the track was AI is not real. And then it turns out, of course, academics and some other people got the exclusive, the exclusive polished version. And it was the same lyrics. A few bars was changed around, but it was the same lyrics, a different instrumental. Also, I have my last words I have to say before I go to our Patreon. I appreciate all of y'all for being in the chat. I know sometimes I could get spicy and be talking shit even to the chat, but it's all out of love. This is hip hop. I, I, uh, I actually disagree. What? I think you're a very submissive black woman. <laughs> 
<laughs> but also, I just want to also say this too. Uh, I also had to get at some people that be commenting on our videos because they take our jokes and they talk shit about us. Like one girl replied, Dark Crimes, y'all biased. Y'all and Kendrick Lamar's di uh, dick. Uh, Drake is the most battle tested out of all of them. But bitch, we said that. <laughs> we the first one who said that. <laughs> you know, how y'all turn it It's like taking my gun and pointing it at me. I already said that, my nigga. We were the first ones to say that, my nigga. So stop turning our gun on us, okay? I'm a boss spitter. Hey. I'm a hard hitter. Yeah, I'm light skinned, but I'm still a dog nigga. I'm a weak splitter. I'm a tall figure. I'm a unforgiving. <laughs> like, come on, what y'all niggas be up to? Y'all be you like when Prince joke was making fun of Drake and just joking around and he called him blackface Drake. Now everybody use that. If we say something positive about Drake, yeah, y'all just up on Drake, but you know, blackface Drake, nigga, we said that first. We said blackface Drake first. We said Drake was the most battle tested nigga of the 2010s first. Okay? Like, stop it. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Players going to play, haters going to hate, and uh, strutters going to strut. You know, so at the end of the day, uh, look, you know. I'm, I'm nah, kidding. we said Blackface Drake well, you know, see, and well, the battle tested shit first. No, when you Stop and I, we are, we are, uh, 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 no, Jay, Jay Coffee. Sin, sin, sin. Okay, you and I, we had already talked. I, I believe you, babe. I trust All you. All right, right. We're going to go to our 10 a.m. Thank you, thing. lovely. That's what that's what I want you. Gunshot Annie. Gunshot Annie. You go ahead and set us up over there, too, by the way, love. We're about to get started over there. Uh, Y'all say he may have dropped something. We'll check it out. We'll be able to we'll be able to play clips. One of the reasons why we do our Patreon, folks, first of all, the channel is demonetized. Let y'all know if y'all was trying to do Super Chat. This channel's been demonetized for, uh, for other weird reasons we can't get into right now. But listen, on our Patreon, we actually like to do more of our streams over there because we get to play content. You know, we get to review things, lyrics and songs like that, okay? So, all right, we love you all so much. All right, y'all take care and see us over there on Patreon at 10 o'clock. All right, and the thing take, please be showing people our receipts because some people try to take credit for shit we said first. Yeah, that is. That, hey, I love it. I love it. I love the support. Love gunshot sing. That's why I... That's why I but we talking about practice, right. man. So, what are we talking about? Care, and we'll practice? And Patreon to continue on in a deeper, more nuanced conversation. You guys know this shit never gets old. This is your man. <laughs> King Kong ain't got shit on me. Is this your king? Huh? Why do you give a fuck? Where's the kaboom? There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. If he dies, he dies.
ਚਾਪੇ ਚ ਆਂ ਬਮੋ ਇੰਤੋਂ ਪਾਰਮੀ